If you are trying to learn SQL, then this is the right video for you. On HackerRank, we have 58 SQL problems. In this video, I'm going to solve them all for you. And not just that, I'm giving you a rich explanation to every single problem. In the description, you have timestamps for every problem so that you can skip to your specific SQL problem that you need to be solved. Now, please subscribe and smash the like button and enjoy the video. Revising the select query one query all columns for all American cities in the city table with populations larger than 100,000. The country code for America is USA. The city table is described as follows. The table with city and columns field and type. Okay, select all columns for all American cities. So we can uh, select them with star. We select all columns from the city table where population is larger than 100,000. Population bigger 100,000. And start. Query all columns for all American cities in the city table with populations larger than 100,000. The country code for America is USA. So now we have all columns for all cities, not just American cities. So we need another where clause and USA we still need country code like USA. And we got it. Query the name field for all American cities in the city table with populations larger than 120,000. The country code for America is USA. The city table is described as follows. So select name for all American cities in the city table from city where Population is bigger than 120,000. And we want to do it for all American cities. So we make country code like USA. Congratulations, Scottsdale, Corona, Corona, Concord, and Seda Rapids. Rapids. Query all columns for every row in the city table. The city table is described as follows. Okay, that's easy. We just query all with the star attribute. So we need the star from city. And we got it. Query all columns for a city in city with the ID 1661. Select all columns star from City where I be like one six six one. Yay, we got it. Next one. Query all attributes of every Japanese city in the city table. The country code for Japan is JPN. All attributes again. So we know what that means. It is a star that we select from city where. Japanese country code is JPN. So we make country code like JPN. And we got it. Query the names of all Japanese cities in the city table. The country code for Japanese, Japan is JPN. Okay, so now we had all attributes. Now we have the names of all Japanese cities. It's a minor difference. Select name column from CD table where country code like JPN. And we got it. Next one. Query a list of city and state from the station table. The station table is described as follows. Select city and state. From which table? From station table. 
And that's it. Let's run it. And we got it again. Query a list of city names from station for cities that have an even ID number. Print the results in any order but exclude duplicates from the answer. The station table is described as follows. Okay. Little more requirements here. Select. So we don't want duplicates. That's why we put a distinct in our query. Query list of city names. So we make name or we city names from station table. So the names are probably in the city column. So we make select distinct city that have an Eden ID number from the station table that have an Eden ID number. Now for that we can use the mode where ID mod 2 equals zero. Mod is now calculating if it is if the column ID is dividable by two. So if it would be two ID, it is correct. The rest is zero. If it's four, the rest is zero. So you always look at the rest. If it's three, then the two fits in one time in the three, and one is the rest. So the rest would be one. So mod looks always on the division. Of these two numbers and then looks on the rest what what remains after you divide it and that is not correct so the mode is not correct here is it maybe mode with an e so let's see mode operator is where modulo now right dividend percent divider and that this is ignorant syntax okay so we just have to put a percentage sign percent and it's correct weather observation station four find the difference between the total number of city entries in the table and the number of distinct city entries in the table the station table is described as follows. So we select count from city minus count from distinct city as difference. So count city, the total number of city and entries. Count distinct is the number of distinct city entries from station table and that's it. All right, 13. Okay, then the next one. Query the list of city names starting with vowels, i.e. A, E, I, O, U from station. The result cannot contain duplicates. Select distinct city from station table where city like a, a percent or city like e percent so now we have to put the vowels a e i o u a e i o u so let's see if this works and it works so weather observation station 7 Query the list of city names ending with vowels A, E, I, O, U from station. Your result cannot contain duplicates. So no duplicates means that we select distinct list of names. The name is in the column city from this table and we want to have it from the station table where so it should end with a vowel. Okay, so we are city like percent, so anything that comes before uh, or and ends with a or city like percent and ends with e. And you will guess how it's going to continue. We just copy this and say or with i o u. So let's write that i o u. Let's see if this works. And we got it.
Next one. Query the list of city names from station which have vowel, i.e. A, E, I, O and U as both their first and last character. Your result cannot contain duplicates. Okay, so now it's the first and the last character. No duplicates means distinct. Column where the city names are is the column city. The table is called station where the city names like so they start as both their first and last characters so they start with vowels and they end with vowels hmm that's a bit, uh, a bit of a tricky one huh so they have to have as the first and the last character a vowel okay so then we can make basically two parts here the first part is starting with the vowel where it's really like a percent or CD like E percent so that is starting with a vowel you can also write that here starting with a vowel or CD like I percent or CD like O percent or CD like U percent so a e i o u and it should end with a vowel and ending with a vowel and we basically take the same and just change it up a little bit a e i o u so now we start with a vowel and we end with a vowel. So what we now have to do is to make brackets so that we can really group these two conditions. So this is the first group and now some brackets for the second group. And that will should meet our requirement. And it works. Weather observation station 9. Query the list of city names from station that do not start with vowels. Your result cannot contain duplicates. Okay, now we select no duplicates means distinct from the column city because they are the city names from station. So they don't start with vowels. Where city not like I present. So 8%, the first vowel, A, E, I, O, U, or C, D, not, like, no, we have to make an N actually, because all the conditions have to be fulfilled. So it should not start with an A, and it should not start with an E, and it should not start with an I, and not with an O, and not with an U. So we have the A, E, I O U and let's run this and it works. Query this list of city names from station that do not end with vowels. Your result cannot contain duplicates. Okay, so we select no duplicates distinct city names column city from station where city they it doesn't end with vowels. Okay, CD not like percent A, so anything that comes before and A as an end, or CD not like percent E, and now let's copy this for the next vowels I O U A E I O U and B. Now we have to be careful, it should not be OR, it should be END. So neither of these conditions has to work, has to be fulfilled. No, start not starting with any vowel. So let's run this. And it works. Next one. Query the list of city names from station that either do not start with vowels or do not end with vowels. The result cannot contain duplicates so either they don't start with vowels 
or they don't end with walls. Okay, so you can select the distinct city name from station. So where do not start with vowels? We have this city not like a percent and CD not like so not starting with any letter that is a e i o e u we put that also in brackets because this is our first condition here we want to have it closed together so CD not like a percent doesn't start with an a doesn't start with an e doesn't start with an i with an o and with a u a e i o u okay now that was only the first condition it should not start with vowels and now the second condition do not end with vowels so it should not be like percent a like percent e like percent i like percent o or like percent u and this should work let's see incorrect syntax near city okay now oh, we have to have an or between them now the second condition has to have an or because we have to either not start with vowels or do not end with vowels so here we have to put an or let's run this and it works query the list of city names from station that do not start with vowels and do not end with vowels your result cannot contain duplicates okay no duplica duplicates means select distinct city from station so do not start with vowels and do not end with vowels where city not i make a comment here do not start with vowels make some brackets where city not like a percent or cd not like e percent so this is the starting with vowels a e i o u a e i o u now we have to so now we have to write and because it should not it should be an end and do not end with vowels now we just copy this one we just have to change it up so now the a is in the front with a percent sign by the way this is not a percent sign so a and whatever comes after that and now we have to make the percent in front so whatever comes first and then a whatever comes and then e and it's the same with i o two so it do it does not start with vowel and it does not end with vowel let's run this and it doesn't work so what is wrong? Query the list of city names from station that do not start with vowels, do not start with vowels, and do not end with vowels. Your results cannot contain duplicates. So we have the distinct city, so no duplicates. So why is it not? So it starts with an A, and it's still here in the result set. Why is that? Ah, because we have OR. We have to write AND at every term. So it should not start with an A and it should not start with an e and so on and so forth and with this and with this and with this and with an i and with an o so it should not start with a it should not and it should not start with e not or because then just one of them it just doesn't have to start with either a e i o u or but it can still start with all the other four definitely need and at every term now let's run this again and it works higher than 75 marks query the name of any student in students who scored higher than 75 marks okay select name order your input by the last three characters of each name if two or more students both have names ending in the same last three characters i.e bobby robbie etc secondary sort them by a scanning id Okay, query the name of any student in students. So the name, the column name from the students table, from students table, who scored higher than 75 marks. So the marks 
uh, in a different table. No, they are also in the students table. This is just a sample. So where mark bigger 75. So this is the first condition. Students with marks bigger than 75. There are 17 students. And order your input by the last three characters of each name. Order by the last three characters of each name. I would call it right from name three characters. So let's see how this works. Stuart, so it's the A R T. Yeah, it looks right. What a weird ordering. So I ordered it by the last three characters by using the right function. I take the column and then it basically takes three whatever, three uh, characters now in case of a string column from the column name and then order its ordering by that. So order by right from name three. So now the second ordering. If two or more students have both have names ending the last three characters, secondary sort them by ID. Okay, so the secondary sort we just do with a comma. And then ID, a scanning ID. So a scanning is any way to do it for it, but we can also write ASC. Now let's run it again. And it works. Employee names. Write a query that prints a list of employee names, i.e. the name attribute from the employee table in alphabetical order. Okay, the list of employee names. Select name from employee in alphabetical order. Can I not just make order by name? And it works. So the alphabetical order is the default. That's why we didn't have to write if we should scanning the scan the name or descend the name. Employee salaries. Write a query that prints a list of employee names for employees in employee. Select name from employee. Yeah. Having a salary greater than $2,000 per month, where salary bigger than 2000 who have been what does it mean the salary is their monthly salary okay so we can write salary to greater than 2000 who have been employees for less than 10 months so the first condition is salary bigger than one two thousand per month the second condition is months should be less less than 10 and this is the semicolon in the end to say that this is um, finished. You don't have to write it, but I like to write it. And let's run the code. And it's working. Okay, now the last one. Type of triangle. Write a query identifying the type of each record in the triangles table using its three side lengths. Output one of the following statements for each record in the table. Equilateral, it's a triangle with three sides of equal length. Isosceles, it's a triangle with two sides of equal length. Scalene, it's a triangle with three sides of different lengths. Not a triangle, the given value of A, B, and C don't form a triangle. Okay, write a query identifying the type of each record in the triangles table. Okay, so what if we only have to figure out equilateral? It's a triangle with three sides of equal lengths. We can make a case statement when a equals b equals c then we put out equilateral so this is the first condition from so in the end of the case statement we have to so case statement is uh, we use basically if we want to describe this different cases which is exactly the case right now of outputs that we want to query from a table. Now we say that if the side A equals the side B equals the side C, then we call it equilateral as it is written in the description. It's a triangle with three sides of equal lengths. A, B, C are the lengths and equal, we just make the equal sign between them. So in the end, we have to write end as, and now we give the column name which unfortunately we cannot see in the output. But this is how the mm, column that we are building now is called. The column is called triangle. So 
this column we put right now actually always stands on top of the things from triangle table triangle table oh incorrect syntax okay so we cannot make two equal signs here so we write a equals b and b equals c because we cannot make a equals b equals c let's run it again okay so what i mean by this and as triangle triangle actually stands in on top of the output on top of the column but uh, hackering doesn't give out the column name the header it just gives out the results so unfortunately we cannot see that we named it triangle at this point okay so the first one should be an equilateral the second one too so let's see if that is true just by giving out a b and c columns also and we have to do it of course after the case statement okay equilateral 10 10 10 yes that looks like it equilateral 11 11 11 it's also true okay so this seems to work so the first case is correct so let's write the next case it's a triangle with two sides of equal lengths okay so when a equals b or b equals c or a equals c then so now we just made the condition that at least two sides have to make equal lengths and because we already have the equilateral in the first it will not fall in the second column because he's gonna check this cases by order so first he's checking the equilateral then he's checking the next one the isoskeles so an equilateral cannot be in the second one because it is already covered in the first so a equals b at least two sides will be either a and b are the same or b and c are the same or a and c are the same so that are the cases for isoskeles and let's just put for better understanding again the column names from a b and c behind it and run this code so isoskeles has now 30 32 30 exactly what we wanted so a and c has the equal lengths looks good to me and the next one is 20 20 40 looks also good okay so now the second case uh, the third case sorry scalene it's a triangle with three sides of different lengths okay three sides of different lengths and the last one not a triangle the given values of a b and c don't form a triangle now what is the definition of no forming a triangle so here it says cannot form a triangle because the combined value of sides a and b is not larger than the side than that of side c yeah okay so if a and b are not larger than c then it cannot be a triangle so the third case all different lengths so basically everything that is not an equilateral or isoskeles and a triangle will have different lengths anyway so we just have to make sure that in a third column not a triangle comes into the third case and then everything that's left is not a triangle anyway so not a triangle the definition is a and b together is not larger than that side of side c so here a and b a plus b has to be larger than c so it still is a triangle then scaling a plus b is bigger than c and now the rest so we just write else that is everything else that is not covered by the first three cases and everything else will be not a triangle not a triangle so now we have the equilateral and we have the isoskeles with at least two sides we have anything else that is a triangle and the, the definition for a triangle would be that a and b is bigger together than the side c and everything else that doesn't fall under these three definitions is not a triangle so let's see if it works and it's the wrong answer because we still have our checks here the a b c columns so we take them away and hopefully 
we will have the right answer. I just comment them out now. And it's still the wrong answer. Okay. So you also have to check if it's a triangle in the isosceles. So it might be that two sides are equal lengths, but it is not a triangle. So that's why it cannot be an isosceles. Got it. So now we have to check if it's a triangle also on the other sides. So in equilateral, two sides are always bigger than the third side because they all equal lengths and 2 plus 2 is always bigger than 2, obviously. But in the isosceles that is not the case. So we have to check if at least two sides are of the same length and if the condition of being a triangle is fulfilled and then it can be an isosceles. And the scalene has only the condition if it is a triangle and then everything else is not a triangle. So let's run this code. And it doesn't work. Here we need still some brackets. Two sides are the same lengths and, and the condition A plus B bigger than C, the condition of the triangle is fulfilled, then isoscale. And it works. The pads generate the following two result sets. Query an alphabetically ordered list of all names and occupations. Okay, select name. So the occupation table is here. Name and occupation. Select name from occupations. Order my name to have it alphabetically. Immediately followed by the first letter of each profession as a parenthetical, i.e. enclosed in parentheses. For example, an actor name A, a doctor name D, a professor name P, a singer name S. Hmm. Immediately followed by the first letter of each profession. Okay, then I would choose to do left function, take the occupation, and now with the left function, I can choose how many letters I want to display, starting to count from the left side. And I want to display one letter as first letter, I call this column. So now I have the name in the first letter, but that's not really what we wanted. We wanted to have also parentheses around that. So I'm going to have to take, put one opening parentheses plus the letter plus closing parentheses. Let's see how this looks. Okay, it looks better. So Amina is a doctor. Ashley is a P. I don't know what P stands for professor and so on. Cool. This is the first one that we finished already. Query the number of occurrences of each occupation in occupations. Sort the occurrences in a scanning order and output them in the following format. Okay, so that should be the second query then. There are a total of occupation count occupations. Interesting, okay. Query the number of occurrences of each occupation in occupation, where occupation count is the number of occurrences of an occupation in occupations, and occupation is the lower case occupation name. If more than one occupation has the same count, they should be ordered alphabetically. All right, there are a total of two doctors. Okay, so we have to do something similar to the parentheses, where we have the string and we also have the column in combination. So we select, we definitely have to make a count, count from occupation, as count from occupations. So now there are a total of 18 occupations in total, all the occupations together. And now we want to group by each occupation, doctor, professor, and so on. 
and how do we group by them. So we want to know how many professors, how many doctors and so on. We make again occupation, we write it as a normal column and then we say after the from group by this occupation column. And now let's run this again. So four actor, three doctor, seven professor, four singer, okay, it's getting in the right direction. But we don't really want four actor and so on. We want to have it differently. We want to write a string. There are a total of occupation count and then occupation. Okay, so let's do it like that. There are a total of and then the plus signs and now we make the count from occupation and now we make a plus and now so there are a total of and now we have the number and then we need one free space and then we need the occupation we had in another row column here. Can we read this? And then we need the S. S should be in the end. Let's run it again. Okay, so he's trying to make everything into the data type integer because count from occupation is in data type integer. And you cannot really mix that with the string values. So you have integer and string data types in one in one line and he doesn't like that so what we have to do is convert we have to convert the integer into a string in order to output it let's see how we do that Or we can also take cast. Cast as varchar. So we make it in a string. Let's say he can have, I don't know, four, and maximum four digits. Cast from the count of operation into a string that is called the varchar here. So then we should have the same data type as. The other ones also because they were strings yep so this is working there are a total of four doctors three doctors seven professors or actors doctors professor singers great now we only have to order this so let's say what was the requirement the number of occurrences of each occupation and occupations sort the occurrences in a scanning order okay order by count from operation and scanning is the default so i have to don't have to write that and output them in the following format yes we did that where occupation count is the number of occurrences yes it is cast into an, a string but it's still the number of occurrences of an occupation and occupations and occupation is the lower case occupation name Ah, lowercase occup occupation name, okay. We don't really have the lowercase occupation name. So how do we do, we do lowercase? Let's see, lowercase SQL, lower function. Okay, so seems to work with the lower function. Lower from occupation. Let's run this. Uh, operation, no, not operation occupation okay so this works lowercase is scanning and now the last condition if more than one occupation has the same occupation count they should be ordered alphabetically okay so here actors and singers have the same occupation count and they should be ordered alphabetically okay then we make occupation in the end. 
the wrong answer though. So why is this the wrong answer? What do we have here? We have the name. Ah, we still have a, um, a free space after the name and the first letter and they don't have the free space. Maybe that's the reason that is still wrong. And yes, there are a total of two doctors. Ah, with a point also in the end. Hmm, okay. So maybe we also have to put the point plus s point and this one should be maybe in one line here so let's take this away plus name profession we call the column and this is name plus opening bracket plus one letter plus closing bracket yeah, that works and it works you get it Carry a count of the number of cities in city having a population larger than 100,000. Okay, select the, the count, the number of cities in city having a population, the count, okay, count from name, let's see, let's count city from the city table where population is bigger, bigger than 100,000. Six. Okay. The sum function. Query the total population of all cities in city where district is California. Select the total population of all cities and city where district is California. Select population from city where district like California. Okay, so now we have every all the sum together, 339,000, but we want to group the sum by the cities. No, we don't have anything. We have an um, error. Incorrect syntax near district. From city where district like California. Total population. Select sum of population. Hmm, we don't get anything out. Oh, maybe district is different than I think here. So let's see how is this shape. Select district from city. How's the district looking? California. So it says California. Okay. Again, select sum from population from city is called the table name where District like California. Yep, that works. Revising aggregation averages. Okay, so now we have to make an average. Query the average population of all cities in city where district is California. Okay, select average. We take AVG from population from city where district like California. Yep, that works. Average population. Query the average population for all cities in city. Okay, average population rounded down to the nearest integer. I think rounding down is with the floor function from city 454,000 okay so it looks like he already rounded it down by itself but we could also use to round the floor function so that way we could make floor from average population yeah and that will also work so in case it will not round down automatically could use this 
Japan population. Query the sum of the populations for all Japanese cities and cities. Select sum from population. Country code for Japan is JPN. Okay, from city where country code like JPN. Population density difference. Query the difference between the maximum and minimum populations in city. Okay, select max from population minus min from population from city. That's it, probably. Top earners. We define an employee's total earnings to be their monthly salary times months worked, and the maximum total earnings to be the maximum total earnings for any employee in the employee table. Write a query to find the maximum total earnings for all employees, as well as the total number of employees who have maximum total earnings. Then print these values as two space separated integers. Here's the employee table with ID, name, month, salary. Okay, so 50 months, salary 1968. The maximum earnings value is 69,952. So that is all the salary, all the months times the salary. And then the sum of that. And then the maximum, okay. Select maximum of months times salary from employees table. From employee. So this are the sum of the maximum. Now this is the maximum earnings that anyone ever did. The only employee with earnings 69,952 is Kimberly. So we print the maximum earnings value and the count of the number of employees who have earned this amount as two space separated values. Okay, so how do we get how many reached this? amount so let's see who did this how can we count who made the maximum earning so we could count we could count how often anyone gets earnings so we don't even have to rate the maximum month salary. We can just make a column month times salary. And we can also make a count from month times salary. We don't even have to write the maximum here because we can also order by Month times salary descending, so the maximum is on top. Okay, so of course, we have to group by the month times salary. Okay, so what I did now is didn't do the maximum in aggregate, I made the month times salary. Our scammer for every employee, I gave months times salary, and then I made the count of months times the salary. So, how often does this particularly maximum earning exist in the table? And then, of course, I have to group by all the maximum earnings. And now we also ordered it so that the highest is on top. And now we know they all have one except the highest. It, uh, occurs seven times and now only all we have to do is just limit this output 
by one uh, by just getting the first output and we can do that for example if we write select top one so just get the first line out and there we go query the following two values from the station table first the sum of all values in let n rounded to a scale of two decimal places select sum from let n from station okay this should be rounded to a value of two decimal to a scale of two decimal places so how we could do that one way is to cast this as a decimal number and then as at a decimal number we can say how many spaces how many how long it should be before the decimal and after the decimal so we say before it can be maximum let's say 10 digits we have here one two three four five digits so that's 10 is more than enough and after it it can be just two digits digits we could because we would just want to have two decimal places afterwards we run it and it doesn't work because we forgot a parenthesis we have to close this bracket and now okay great so now we have the first value what should be the second value the sum of all values in long w okay select sum from long rounded to a scale of two decimal places so the same as before cast from sum from long w as decimal from 10 with two decimal places from the station table uh, okay let long okay so the form should be different it should not be one below the other one but it should more be like in one row okay so we make case from this plus we leave a space and then we make plus the other one then we delete the second query and run it again converting data to varchar to numeric Okay, now here's a problem because we left a space here and that is a string and these are two numbers decimal numbers in fact so what we have to do now is to cast them again into bar charts into strings cast this one as varchar so that we can also make the space between them we have to make them into a bar jump to a character so this way we have the string then we have a bracket which is also a string and then we have another string otherwise we would have in one row number the string the bracket and the space and another number and that doesn't work different data types so let's see and it works so now we have the output Weather observation station 13. Query the sum of northern latitudes from station having values greater than 38,700, no, 38.788 and less than 137.72345. Truncate your answer to four decimal places. Query the sum of northern latitudes. Okay. Select sum from northern latitudes that is the column let n from station table where let n is bigger than 38.788 and let n is smaller than 137.2345 truncate your answer to four decimal places so we want to cast this sum as a decimal number with let's say 10 digits maximum 10 digits before the decimal and four digits afterwards and close this as sum call it sum and it works 
Weather Observation Station 14. Query the greatest value of the northern latitudes from station that is less than 137.2345. Truncate your answer to four decimal places. Okay, the greatest value, we need the max function from northern latitudes, let n from station where let n is less than less than 137.2345 truncate your answer to four decimal places so we cast it again as a decimal number with 10 digits maximum before the decimal and four afterwards as the sum we call the column sum you can call it here whatever you want i call the column here sum and it works next one carry the western longitude for the largest northern longitude in station that is less than 137.2345 Round your answer to four decimal places. Select max from northern latitude from station where no query the western query the western longitude for the largest northern latitude in station. Okay, so query the western longitude, western from station for the largest northern latitude where let n equals max from let n. So we want the largest northern latitude so we say let n has to be the maximum from northern latitude and let n query the western longitude for the largest northern latitude in station that is less than so we make first where let n is smaller 137.2345 and then having let n equal max from let n. Is this working? Group by let n. now let's think again so query the western longitude for the largest northern latitude in station that is less than 137.2345 okay so for the first select let's first write for the first one select let n select max from let n nicht max max let max let n from station where let n smaller than 137.2345 so let's do it in two steps the first step is we query the largest northern latitude in station that is less than 137.2345 that is the first step with let n largest then we write that in a contemporary table with a CTE and now we can query that for the next question so select 
we want the lo western longitude from station where no not where we make a join on station s on let n largest the table that we just created above l on l dot and we want to join with this column that we here created here the max let n max let n equals s dot and this should be the northern latitude so we match it on the this northern latitude value that we created in the col in the table above and by that we can get the the western longitude that we wanted okay now all we have to do is to cast this one as a decimal number with let's say 10 digits before you can also say three digits before that's also enough at this point but the more uh, you take it doesn't make a difference and in case it is bigger it's better to take more digits in front of the decimal and after the decimal four digits as we can call this column long w Hmm. Okay, let's take a bigger scale here. Arithmetic overflow error. Hmm. I don't understand. Ah, now it works. Okay, so we had to make for some reason the 10 before the decimal and the 4 after the decimal. Don't really know why, but this seems to be working. Query the weather observation station 16. Query the smallest northern latitude from station that is greater than 38.778. Okay, select the smallest, then we have to take the minimum. Let in from station where let n is greater than 38.778 and we still have to cast it cast as decimal 10 4 because we want four decimals after the decimal point as minimum minimum let's say let's call it minimum and whoops next one weather observation station 17 query the western latitude where the smallest northern latitude in station is greater than 38.778 route an answer to four decimal places Okay, so first we select the smallest northern latitude, long W, as smallest from station where long W should be greater than 38.778. Okay, so greater than 38.778. Seven, seven, eight. So first we take this number, the smallest northern latitude in station that is greater than 38.778. We have this one now. We write this in a small CTE with small s. So we call this table small and what we can do now is we can select 
the western longitude which we actually want to get put out select long w from the station table where not where uh, join and now we join by that we take all the other rows away except this row where so from station s join small so the other table that i just created here s on s dot a uh, station is also s that's not popular so we call station st on s dot smallest equals st and now we match with this northern latitude that is exactly the number that we got out here before on st dot northern latitude and now we have the western longitude that we wanted no response ah because we talked uh, took the minimum uh, western longitude of course we have to take here the minimum northern latitude where northern latitude is bigger than 38.778 northern latitude not longitude so let in and here also the let in so then we can join it on the let in that is exactly the requirements in the next table and we should get out one uh, western longitude and all we have to do now is to cast again to four decimal places as it says around your answer to four decimal places so we cast the western longitude as a decimal number 10 with four decimal places afterwards as long w and it works weather observation station 18 consider p1 a b and p2 cd to be two points on a 2d plane a happens to equal the minimum value in northern latitude let n is station b happens to equal the minimum value in western longitude c happens to equal the maximum value in northern latitude d happens to equal the maximum value in western latitude query the manhattan distance between points p1 and p2 and round it to a scale of four decimal places the manhattan distance i would suggest that the manhattan distance is the maximum la northern latitude minus the minimum northern latitude and the maximum western latitude longitude minus the uh, the minimum western longitude let's see if that is true measured along axis at right angles the plane was p1 and p2 ah so it is the absolute x1 minus x2 plus the absolute from y1 minus y2 mm, okay so we take the absolute between the points and add them together all right select So A, B, C, D. Let N and long W from station. So let's look at this. ID. So what I'm thinking is, um, how do we know which A, B, C, D? they want now 
Ah, the minimum and maximum. Ah, yeah, okay, of course. So A is the minimum value of northern latitude. So four points basically are interesting for us. The minimums from both uh, latter nor from both northern latitude and western longitude and the maximum of them. Okay, so select minimum from let n minimum from long w maximum from let n and maximum from long w so these are the four points that we take an interest in and to get the absolute difference i believe you make abs so now we want the absolute difference from the northern latitude points so we make abs from maximum northern latitude minus minimum northern latitude and close the abs so we take this away and also the abs from maximum long western longitude minus minimum western longitude so i believe these are the two differences okay okay so we get something out and now we have to add this ones together as it says in the definition x1 minus x2 and y1 minus y2 which we have here and then we add them together which we do here okay so now all we have to do is to cast them to four decimal places cast this one as a decimal with four decimal places as a Manhattan let's call it Manhattan distance and work so weather observation station 19 consider P1 AC and P2 BD to be two points on a two-day plane where a, b are the respective minimum and maximum values of northern latitude and c, d are the respective minimum and maximum values of western longitude in station. Query the Euclidean distance between points p1 and p2 and format your answer to four decimal digits. Now what is the Euclidean distance? It's the length of a line segment between two points. Can be calculated from the Cartesian coordinates of the points using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Pythagorean. I think Pythagora was the guy that said A square plus B square equals C square. So let's see, two dimensions, this is what we need right now. Okay, so we make the difference between the points Q and P. We have P1, P2 and Q1, Q2. We have the difference between Q1 and P1. And the difference between Q2 and P2. So what is Q1, Q2 in this case? A, B are the minimum, minimum and maximum values and C, D are the minimum and maximum values of western longitude. So probably we have to make the difference Mm, 
between AC and BD. So as I do, it's written here. I believe we have to make the difference between the minimum from northern latitude, which is A, and the minimum from western longitude, which is C. So AC and BD, we have to make the differences here. And the difference, we have to make a square from the difference and then add them also together. So select, select the minimum from northern latitude minus the minimum from western longitude. So this is uh, Q1 minus P1. Then let's make it Let's make a square. How do you make a square? Oh, you just write square. Okay. That's easy. So we write square from this guy's from station. Let's see if this one works. Seems to be working. So we have the square from the first one. Now we have to add the second two points and then we make the square from the maximum northern latitude minus the maximum western longitude. Okay, this is also working. And now we have to take the square root from both of them from this sum. And how do we do the square root in SQL? SQRT. Okay. So SQRT from this guys should be something like, I don't know, 30. That is something. 19. 19.88. Okay, that's also okay. And now we make the cast from this all as the decimal with 10 for the decimals after the point as Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is what I call the column and run it again it is not the correct answer 19.8870 p1 and p2 in format you answer to display four decimal digits okay so the only thing that could be wrong here is where I put the minimum and the maximum values so P1, P2, let's say this is minimum longitude, minimum latitude, maximum longitude, maximum latitude. So we have to take here the minimum longitude minus the minimum longitude minus the minimum latitude. Ah, the minimum minus the minimum and the maximum minus the maximum. It's not like I, we did it, so... Well, no, we did it like this. The minimum latitude minus the minimum longitude. Huh. But here it says AC and BD are the points. So the points are AC and BD. So we have here AC and BD. So we would have to make AC, BD, D minus. So if here is Q1 minus P1, that would mean here B minus A. And B is the maximum northern latitude. And A is 
the minimum northern latitude. Okay, so we have to um, make the maximum northern latitude minus the minimum northern latitude. So that is the right mapping of the points. So the mapping was wrong from uh, this formula and P1, P2, Q1, Q2 on our example with AC and BD. So the right mapping should be we take the maximum northern latitude minus the minimum northern latitude and the maximum western longitude minus the minimum western longitude and this should be our answer the euclidean distance and it works Given the city and country tables, query the sum of the populations of all cities where the continent is Asia. Is Asia. Select, select sum of the population from all cities from from the city table and we have to join the country table do we given the city and country tables query the sum of all cities where the continent is asia city.country code and city and country.code are matching key columns okay the sum of the population. Ah, okay, we don't have city here. We have the population here. And here we have name. So we take the sum of the population from all cities, join CDC join. Okay, so we just have to give out the sum of the population from the CDC for where the continent is Asia. Okay, so we join a country CO on CO dot code equals C dot country code country code because it says city dot country code and country dot code are matching key columns so sum from c dot population c dot country code where c where the country table has the continent that equals asia and we got it okay african cities given the city and country tables query the names of all cities where the continent is africa okay select name from city and now we join select name from city c let's call it c dot name and join the country code join country co on co dot on country dot code we can join equals to city dot country code so c dot country code where where what is the condition where continent equals to Africa and it works average population of each continent given the city and country tables query the names of all the continents country dot continent and their respected respective average city populations rounded down to the nearest integer 
Creating the names of all the continents and their respective average city populations. Okay, select the name of all the continents. Ah, country.continent is the name, okay. Select continent and creating the names of all the continents and their respective average city populations. City dot population. Okay. So we make average from population. From city table C and now we join the country CO on CO.code equals the city is the matching column country code country code and it doesn't really matter if you first go from country or you first go from city in this case I first go from city and then I join the country table on the matching columns which are code and country code in the city table and now we have the continent and the average population and now we also have to group by the continent okay population is in both tables so we want the population from and uh, the cities so we call it c dot population and we got it so the next problem is going to be the blunder samantha was tasked with calculating the average monthly salaries for all employees in the employees table but did not realize her keyboard's zero key was broken until after completing the calculation she wants your help finding the difference between her miscalculation using salaries with any zeros removed and the actual average salary write a query calculating the amount of error actual minus miscalculated average monthly salaries and round it up to the next integer okay so output should be average from the salary minus average from salary without zeros so what did samantha do so she lost the zeros in the salaries so now we have salaries here 1420 and the salary without zero would be 142 Ashley has 2006 and the salary without zeros is the 26 and so on and we need the salary the average one time with the zeros and one time without the zeros all right so let's make a select let's first look star from employee employees to get all the employees columns okay so we have the columns id name and salary so actually we are just interested in the column salary from employees okay so this is the salary column from employees what else do we need we need the salary column but without the zeros so how can we get that the salaries and now we can use the function replace in which we can use any character in a column and replace it with another character so replace from salary actually this is not a character but a number but we can treat it as a character so we make parentheses like this and we write zero we want to replace zero with nothing so we just write this parentheses so this way we take all the zeros from the salary and we replace it with nothing so let's run this code okay so that looks pretty good here already 2340 and we have 234 without the zero so now what do we want we want one time the average from the first column and we want the average from the second column and then we want to divide one with the other okay so for average we can just use let's separate this a bit to get a better overview so for average we can just use the function average average salary as salary average as salary no 
zeros. Okay, so we have a error here. Operand data type barcha is invalid for average operator. So the problem is with this replace, because we use strings here in the replace function, it turned the column salary actually into a varchar column and we cannot use that in order to make an average over a varchar column. That means before we can make the average we actually have to transform this column into a number column or a decimal. We can use for example a decimal number that we can do with that with the function cast. So we use cast from this replace as a decimal and decimal you can define a new number type which it should have with for example up to 10 digits before the comma and two digits after the comma so let's define it like this okay so actually we have here one two three brackets that we open and we close no one two, three, but here we also have a fourth one. So four open brackets and three brackets are closing. So we need another closing bracket here and now it should work. All right. So we have now 1,794.5 and 4,046. So in this one, the average, he already rounded the average to a full integer, but in order to get the right solution, we actually need this in another type, in another format, the salary column. And we need it also as a decimal format. So I'm going to cast this salary, cast as salary as decimal pen two, and of course closing brackets. All right, so that looks better. So we have now this uh, real salary average here with the decimal places and here also. So all we have to do now is to subtract one from the other. And actually we had another condition here. Write a query calculating the amount of error. Actually mine is miscalculated. Average monthly salaries and round it up to the next integer. Okay, so condition round the, round the result up to the next integer. So that's very important. So let's use this one as a temporary table as the first solution where we write with average s and then we use this as the first table. And now we refer to this table, which we just defined and we are gonna subtract. So select salary. You can also write this all in one table, but for the overview, I'm just gonna make two tables out of this. So I'm going to use select salary minus salary no zeros. And from where do I take this? I take this from the average table that I just created before this. And then I close it. Okay, so we have 2252.25. So all we have to do is now for the solution is to round it up to the next integer. And for rounding, we, you can use the round function where, where it's going up or down. Then you can use the ceiling function and ceiling, as the name says, it's on the top of the ceiling. So you round it to the next integer or you can use also the floor function and then you round it down to the next integer. So this one actually won't round up as a, this was the condition. So we are going to use the ceiling function here. So we select ceiling from salary minus salary no zero zeros. And that should be the solution. Let's run the code. And that's it. Okay, so let's solve weather observation station five, which is an easy problem, but it is an intermediate problem also. Query the two cities in station with the shortest and longest city name, as well as their respective lengths, i.e. number of characters in the name. There is more than one smallest or largest city. Choose the one that comes first when ordered alphabetically. The station table is described as follows. So we have just one table and the fields are ID, city, state, latitude north, latitude width, latitude western two cities in station with the shortest and longest city names. Okay, 
So we want output two CDs with shortest and longest city name as well as their respective lengths with shortest and longest city name plus the length of the city condition with the same length choose alphabetically so if two cities are the length uh, 10 so they have 10 characters then we choose the one that is first in the alphabet okay northern latitude and western longitude that is not important for this one what is important is the city which is the city name and that's probably it for example city has four entries def abc pqrs and uh, wxy so abc is chosen and there is a space and then there is the length of this character of this city okay so we are using the sy syntax ms sql server let's first query the minimum from city as city from how's the table called station so the minimum is acme with four characters so let's choose the maximum maximum from city is zionsville with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten with ten characters okay so it looks like it's already asking alphabetically automatically because this one gives me the z when i the z when i choose max and when i choose min it gives me a one city with an a but we want to choose always alphabetically no matter if it's the min or the max select min from city city min so now i'm choosing the min and the max separated with a comma acme zionsville okay so so let's just do uh, two queries now so let's do two separate queries that will make it easier select min from cd select cd length so with length we can actually get the number of characters so we choose 30 and length from 30 let's take this one away and let's first solve one problem and that is a cd with shortest character length alphabetically sorted so first we choose solve one problem we get the city with the shortest character length and also the number of characters and then we solve the other problem and then we combine the two queries so we select city that will give us the city name we select the length from city that will give us the number of characters now we have to choose from which table from station and now we have to give a condition so we want to have now he would give us just all the cities we can run it you can see we get all the cities now okay length is actually not right it's just a len from city so now we get all the city and cities and we get their character lengths ah, and we have quite a few that are more than 10 characters okay so now we want to have a condition we only want to get these cities that have the shortest character lengths so we put that in the where clause where length from city equals how do we get the minimum length ah wait we can order by the length yeah that's a good idea we order by the length of the city and we order by city so what do we do now we don't make a where condition but we make an order by condition why because we want to order by the length of the city if we order like this then the shortest length is going to be on top of our list exactly what we want and then the second ordering will be by city name so we have them also alphabetically ordered so now we are going to run this and why do we want it like that because then we can get exactly our condition 
what we wanted. So we wanted the shortest CD name and we wanted them also alphabetically sorted. So the shortest one are Amo, Lee and Roy and the one that is stands on top in the alphabet is Amo, Amo 3. So that's exactly what we wanted now. And now we just have to limit our result by one row and then we only get the top row and that is Amo 3 and that is already the first part of the solution of the code. Okay, so limit seems to be the wrong syntax. If I want to select only the first row, we can also do select top one. Then we don't need the limit. This will basically do the same thing. We select the first row and now we have AMO3. Perfect. That is the first part of our solution. So now we take the same query and we're going to do it again right below. We don't really have to change a lot here. We just need to order by length from city is correct, but we now we make a descending order here. So then we get the highest length on top and it still should be alphabetically ordered. And that would give us now the longest character length. Then we write here city with longest character length alphabetically sorted. So now that should give us the solution. Let's see. And we did it. It's Amo and Marine en sans quoi. Draw the triangle. P from, from R represents a pattern drawn by Julia in R rows. The following pattern represents P from 5. Okay, so we have 5 stars, 4 stars, 3 stars, 2 stars, 1 stars. Write a query to print the pattern P.20. Let's start with 20 stars and goes down to one star. Okay, now we have the question actually. Question how to print a star. How to print multiple rows that are changing values. Probably we have to do a loop here where we always count one down with a variable. So let's see the variables in MSSQL. MSSQL variable. So we have to declare maybe a variable at counter counter how to print a star print a star in MS SQL or maybe just print a letter hmm <laughs> while so we have a counter variable mrs square let's take this out declare my counter int oh yeah we can do it like this declare it counter int set counter equals zero equals 20 and let's say 20 because we need 20 times while counter bigger than zero begin And here we have the end. Okay, so we have here we have a loop. That's good. And in the end, we say set counter dash counter minus one. In the beginning, in the meantime, we want to do something. So we have declared a variable counter. Set the counter to 20 because we want to print the pattern p from 20 while counter equals bigger than zero 
we want to we begin and we set counter to counter minus one and now we want to print actually the stars the star how can we print the star now print from one star let's see what this gives okay now we printed 20 times one star okay so this was working but how can we print less of it every time so maybe if we can print this one in every row as often as we have the counter for example in the first row the counter is 20 and we have the star here if we can print the star 20 times in the first row then we would have our the right pattern would have 20 in the first row 19 in the second row 18 in the third row and so on until the one in the last row how do we get that print letter msql n times replicate ah oh, replicate that could be a good function thank you google that sounds good that sounds good that sounds like we could use it replicate 04 so replicate is a string and an integer expression okay that's good so let's say replicate replicate string is a star and the integer is at counter and let's run this come on incorrect syntax near replicate mm, okay Replicate string integer. Maybe we have to put a print also around this. Print replicate. Yeah, that could work. That could work here. Yes, it looks good. It looks not so bad. But I think we have P von R represents a pattern drawn by Julia in R rows. The following pattern represents P from 5. Write a query to print the pattern P from 20. Okay, it looks like they have a small break between them. Anyway, so the pattern looks right until the end, but I think they have a break between them, a line, or yeah, you know, like a space, one space. So maybe with a space, it's right. Yes, now we got it. Perfect. Congratulations. Okay, let's save this one. Because the next one is called draw the triangle 2, probably it's similar to that. So let's save this one for the next code. Close this one. Draw the triangle 2. P from R represents a pattern drawn by Julia in R rows. The following pattern presents P from 5. Write a query to print the pattern P from 20. Okay, so now basically I just have to do it the other way around. Declare at counter int. We had the counter 20, now we need the counter to zero. And now while counter is smaller than 20, smaller than 20, and we plus one we put the counter counter plus one and now it should already work let's see nope it's not working wrong answer so the first one has no asterisk here hmm, okay maybe we have to set the counter on to one and last one should be 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, that's one to less. Then make let's make this one smaller equals 20. And we set the counter to one. And now let's go. Let's go, baby. Yes. Yes, we did it. Whew. So we have all easy problems solved on HackerRank SQL. The pets is a problem where you really have to read the task 
And you have to be careful that really how your result in the end is looking like, because you have to write a sentence. But let's start from the beginning. Generate the following two result sets. Query an alphabetically ordered list of all names and occupations, immediately followed by the first letter of each profession as a parenthetical, i.e. enclosed in parentheses. For example, an actor name, a doctor name, a professor name, and a singer name S. Second, query the number of occurrences of each occupation and occupations. Sort the occurrences in a scanning order and output them in the following format. There are a total of occupation count, occupation S dot. Where occupation count is the number of occurrences of an occupation and occupations, and occupation is the lower case occupation name. If more than one occupation has the same occupation count, they should be ordered alphabetically. Okay, let's first write down what we have to do. So we have two result sets that we have to get. So we make output, then the first one. In the first one, we should alphabetically order list of all names and occupations. So we need name, condition, Order by alphabetically means order by name. So our query an alphabetically ordered list of all names and occupations, immediately followed by the first letter of each profession as a parenthetical. Okay, name and then the professions we get with occupation. Okay, first letter of occupation. Okay, so an actor name, a doctor name, a professor name. Any more conditions? For example, okay, I think that was it for the first one. Then the second one. Vary the number of occurrences of each occupation in occupations. So number of occurrences of each occupations. So the number we have to count the occupation. How often does it happen? And we should do it for each occupation. So we count the occupation and we group it by also occupation because we should do it for each occupation. And output them in the following format. There are a total of occupation count, occupation as dot. So output this sentence. Condition. What are conditions where occupation count is the number of occurrences of an occupation? Okay, and occupation is the lower case occupation name, the lower case. Okay, so we make lower case occupation. If more than one occupation has the same occupation count, they should be ordered alphabetically. But first, we should sort them, the occurrences in ascending order. Order by, actually the first condition st standing here at the top, sort the occurrences in ascending order. Order by occupation, no, actually occurrences count from occupation. So it says how often does it happen? That is the first order, the second, order by, and they should be ordered alphabetically. So after occupation. So let's first start with the first column. Select, what do we want? We want the name, very an alphabetically ordered list of all names in occupation, immediately followed by the first letter of each profession. Okay, select name, the first letter. How do we get the first letter? We have a left command where we can give only a part of the whole string. So we want the occupation, but we only want one letter. So we make left and then we write one. From table is called occupations. So let's run this one. Okay, so we have the name and we have the first letter. But the first letter should be in parentheses, like here in the result. 
So what we can do actually here is a concat function. Concat can combine. So first we take open we open it up, then comma, then we write the occupation, comma, and we close it again. And this way we can put the parentheses. Let's see if it works. Okay, that looks pretty good. So are there any more condition in the first one? Yes, order by name. Okay, from occupations, order by name. Run it again. Okay, so that looks good. We still have a, like a break here between the name and the letter. We don't have this, we don't see this break here. So probably that should not be separated columns. There should be one column. What can we do to make it one column? We take the name away here and we write concat and we write the name in the concat. First the name, then the comma, opening up, then the occupation, the first letter, and then closing it again. Let's run it like this. Yes, that looks now very close and it looks like the result set here. Okay, now the second result below this. Select, so what do we want? Vary the number of occurrences of each occupation and occupations. Okay, the number is count from occupation, from occupations. See how this goes. So let's put this query aside for a moment. And let's just try the second one here. Black count from occupation from occupations. So now we just have one number, 18, because he's just counting the total of them. And now, now what should we count? We should count of each occupation, like we wrote here, occupation. So we have to make the count from occupation for each occupation. So we write occupation as a second column. And we have to group it always when we have an aggregate, like count, it's also an aggregate. We have to group the other column, group it by occupation. Let's run this one again. Now we should get it for each occupation. And there we got it. Four actors, three doctors, seven professors, and four singers in the table. Okay, great. We already have the hardest part figured out. Now we just have to try to put this four actors into this sentence. There are a total of two doctors, there are a total of two singers, and the order by should be actually by the count of occupation. Let's try to make the sentence first. So to make the sentence, we are using the concat function again, like before, concat from, then first use the sentence there, are a total of, then use the count, comma, count from occupation. Make this one big for now to make it better visible. There are a total of count from occupation. And what comes after this? There are a total of, uh, of, we also need here one more space, of the count, then we need a space again after the count, and then we need the occupation. So a comma and occupation. Let's delete this once, and let's see what the concat function brings here. Okay, that looks pretty good. There are a total of four actor. There are a total of three doctor. Okay, so now we also had another condition. What was the condition? order by count from occupation. So we have to order by the count and the second order by the occupation because it has to be alphabetically. So here it is after the count, but ascending. So the smallest count first and then it gets bigger. Okay, order by is always the last command. Order by count from occupation. Let's run this one. Okay, great. Now we have the smallest one here, three to seven, the biggest one. So what else is looking different? There are a total of two doctors. So we have an S and a dot in the end. So let's put this one also. 
occupation, comma, the strings, and then s dot. Let's run this one again. There are a total of three doctors. Yeah, that looks better already. Uh, we also have to order it alphabetically. We can see here we just have four, four, one time the case that we have it even, and then it already is ordered alphabetically A, and then comes the S. But just to make it complete, we also write it here. The second order should be occupation. Okay, now nothing changed, but we have it here. So what else is different? There are a total of three doctors. So if you look closely, you can see that actually we still are missing one condition, and that is that should be lowercase. Where do we write it? We wrote it here. The condition lowercase occupation. So all the, of these occupations are in lowercase. And for that, we can just use the command lower. Pretty simple, just lower. And now it should look exactly the same as before. There are a total of three doctors. And here, there are a total of two doctors. Okay, the names, obviously the numbers can be different, but that looks pretty much the same. Okay, now we have also the second query ready. Now we only have to do the combination of the first and the second one. So now we have the second one. Here we saved the first one from before. And now we have to combine it. Let's see. We have the solution. And there we have it. You are given a table BST containing two columns, N and P, where N represents the value of a node in binary tree and P is the parent of N. Why not write a query to find the node type of binary tree ordered by the value of the node? Output one of the following for each node. Root, if node is root node, Leaf is if node is leaf node, inner if node is neither root nor leaf node. Sample input. So what is NNP? The binary tree below illustrates the sample. Five two three one five eight six nine. Okay, what is NNP? So one is a leaf. Why is one a leaf? Because one is a leaf and the parent is two. And P is the parent of N. So two is the parent of N. And N represents the value of a node in binary tree. So here is the value one which we have here, n is 1, and the parent we have here 2, 2 is the parent, and from 2 the parent must be 5, yes, so 5 is the root, so we have 1 is the leaf, how is the leaf characterized, leaf is no, if node is a leaf node, okay, there are three types of nodes. What characterizes a root? A root is easy because a root is uh, where the p value is null. A leaf. So let's write that down. Root definition p. Leaf, if node is leaf node. Okay, what makes a leaf node a leaf node? What makes you a leaf node? So you definitely have a parent, but inner has a parent too. But inner, the parent of inner, is always the root. The parent of inner is the root because 2 and 8 are inners 
and the parents from 2 and 8 are both 5. So the definition of an inner, inner definition is t value is the root. So anything else would be the leaf. The leaf would be definition A leaf definition is anything else. So p value is not null and t value is not the root. Okay, so let's write the query. How would we write the query? First step. First step, we would write, we would make a pre-query to find the root. Find the root. Define root, inner, and leaf. And that would be the, and for now, we might have to do more steps, but we are going to figure that out on the way. So we want to have the output of the n ordered, the smallest value, and then it's getting bigger. So it's ascending. But first, let's get the root. Let us get the root. How do we get the root? Well, the root should be relatively easy. The table, I think, is BST. So we select star from BST, where the column P is now. P is null. We should just get one number out here if I remember correctly. 15 null. Why do we get null out? Oh, because we get a star, but we just want the n. Because we want to have, we want the n column, so we don't want 15 null, we want just want the 15. So we have the root that is 15. So that is our first condition that we already fulfilled, our first definition. P value is null, and that is 15. 15. So we want the inner definition is P value is the root. As you can see, before I wrote any SQL, I was thinking about the problem. I was writing my notes, and then if I have it clear in my head what I want to do, then I can start the query. Select N, so we have now the root. We want the inner value. So inner we define as P value as the root. Select N from PST, where P equals, and now we can make a subquery SQL. You just open the brackets and you write exactly what is written here. So that way you can, so you make P equal, and because we just got a number out here, 15, we can just put this query as a P equals, and then we also get a 15 out. We don't need this one anymore now. So we have 4 and 11 as the inner value. It's great. So let's write this one. Let's save this one. It's a temporary code save. So 
how do we get all of them? Maybe we could make a union, I think. There won't be a solution. So what I'm thinking about is to write n. What I'm thinking about is to make a one query, then a union, then a second query, then a union, then a third query. And then you have it all on one under another. And you have to write inner leaf and root. So this one was the definition of inner. We, we can write inner. Let's just test this. Okay, this is working. Let's make the first. Select. I'm writing the root. From BST. Where P is now. Now I want to union this one. See what comes out of here. This is not working uh, because we just have one column here. We have to have both the same number of columns. So we have n and this one was a root definition. So we write root inner inner root. Okay, that looks not too bad. And now let's write the third definition. So we have the third definition. The definition is here. P value is not null and P value is not the root. Okay. Select N. What's the third one? How is it called? It's called leaf, right? Yes, leaf. Let's write leaf from EST where. So we have the conditions, not null, the first condition, and P not equals, but P is unequal to the root. So we don't need equal sign, we need the unequal. In the root definition, we have it here, so we make a Sub-query again, we take this one, put it here, so now we have the two condition for the leaf. I think that should work now, let's see if it does. So now we have a lot of leaves here, and from my opinion, that should be the solution. Except one thing is missing, it's not ordered. So we should order by n value. We have it here. So let's do this here. Order by not b n y by n, and we want ascending. I think that's the default, but I wrote it anyway. So now we only have to leave ordered. Okay, he does not order the ones before the leaf. <laughs> Do I have to, did I put a union here? No, I didn't. Should I not also put a union in this one? I think I should, maybe then he's ordering everything. Let's see. He is ordering everything and it looks okay, but still I get the wrong answer. I wonder why. Leaf, inner, leaf, root, leaf, inner, leaf. Okay. So we don't have it right, I think, because we put the big letters. Should only start with a big letter. So something is wrong here. 
obviously my definition of them I think was not right because I so we define the leaf as the p-value is not null and p-value is not the root but this seems like an insufficient definition why because we were looking at this example and there the case is true but here we have only three six seven nodes and in this case it is true but this definition is not sufficient for our case now as we have here 15 roots so we have to kind of make a picture of what we are actually looking at here so let's try to make a picture so that we have a better understanding of this we have 15 nodes here we're gonna have the number one node this is gonna go into number two and here we have another one number three then we have three nodes now we come another one that is four here we have five then we have six and then we have seven and now we do the next row we still have 15 so we continue we have eight very beautiful nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen and now we have a clear picture of what this actually looks like we have the 15 notes and what would be an inner note here what would characterize the root is clear it is up here and the leaves i think all the, one, the ones above are leaves and the inner is probably everything between the bottom row and the top root if i understand now correctly so we have to change our definition our definitions were not sufficient the root definition is still true the p value is null that is the root the inner definition is not true the p value is the root because we have here inner nodes four five six seven that they that the parent is not the root and there are still inner values the question is how do we have a sufficient definition that we can characterize the inner nodes correctly and how can we characterize the other nodes correctly because this is also not true p value is not null and p value is not the root this they meet this definition the p value is not null here the p value is two and three and the p value is not the root that is also true here but they are not leaves they are inner so we got a bit of a problem here the question is how can we solve that what makes this inner nodes inner nodes well we know that the inner nodes they have two strings here that the leaves don't have so the leaves are not a parent of anyone so the leaf definition is the p and the leaf the p value for example 15 is not a parent to anyone p value is not a parent value the leaf is not apparent to anyone that is i think a sufficient definition of the leaf and the inner definition would be well we define the leaves and we define the root now we can just say about the inner then that is the p value is not a null and value is parent to at least one 
So the le the inner is parent always to two leaf values, but at least one is also enough definition to define an inner value. Okay, but how do we translate that in a query, in an SQL query? The root is very simple again. The root value is very simple. So maybe we can define the leaf before that looks like an easier definition because it just has one one condition is not a parent value. So maybe we should get the list of parent values. All the values that are parent to somebody. How could we get that? So we save our code here. Root. This one, I don't know what to write here. So we want to get select P from BST. And no, we want the N, the values we want to have. The notes. Notes from BST. Well, first, first, let's get the parents. Let's get all the parents here. Select P from BSD. So let's select this thing P. And P from BSD. So now we got all the parents here. We don't need null here in this list. Where P is not null. I don't want the null value because the root we can get anyway. That's not really a problem. And now we would like to get the nodes that don't have these values because then we have the leaves. P value. Node value. Actually, you have to write node value. And node value is not. Node value is not. Parent value. So then we can make an accept list. I think that will be good. And from. PST. And you write accept. And then we select this one. So now, I think now we can exclude everyone that is not a parent. Now we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 values. 2, 4, 6, 8. Yeah, we also have here 8 values on the bottom. So that looks about right. Now we got all the leaf values. That's good. We also know the root value. Now we just get have to get the inner values. How do we get the inner values very easily here? Well, the inner values are everything except the root value and the leaf value. So first let's get, so let's say this one is inner. How can we write inner now? In uh... Yep, that looks right. Actually, we should not write everything in big brackets. You read it like this, yes. Now we get the root value. And root all here from PST where T is not null. We don't need the semicolon here. And I would like to union this one. See how this one is looking. Rot, I wrote rot. Oh, that's also interesting. 
where P is not null, oh, I mean where P is null, sorry. Where P is null, not rot, but we need that root. So now we have the inner and the root. We only need Today we are going to do new companies. Ember's conglomerate corporation just acquired some new companies. Each of the companies follows this hierarchy. Founder, lead manager, senior manager, manager, employee. Given the table schemas below, write a query to print the company code, founder name, total number of lead managers, total number of senior managers, total number of managers, and total number of employees. Order your output by a scanning company code. Note the table may contain duplicate records. The company code is string, so the sorting should not be numeric. For example, if the company codes are C1, C2, and C10, then the scanning company codes will be C1, C10, and C2. Okay, let's try to get the most important informations already in the notepad. Make this one a bit smaller. So first, what do we want to output? Write a query to print the company code, founder name. So let's write output, company code, founder name, total number of lead managers, total number of senior managers, total number of employees. After the hierarchy that we see here in this picture. Order your output by a scanning company code. Condition, order by company code. Tables may contain duplicates records. If we get duplicate records, take the note, may contain duplicates. Solution for duplicates will be to get unique records out because we don't want the duplicates. And to get unique records, we have to use distinct. How I use that, you will see later in the code. The company code is string, so the sorting should not be numeric. For example, if the company codes are C1, C2, and C10, then the scanning company codes will be C1, C10, and C2. So the order should be order, like C1, C10, C2. Two, which is a bit counterintuitive because you would think that the order will be C1, C2, C3, and so on. Okay, input format. The following tables contain company data. Company, the company code is the code of the company and founder is the founder of the company. Okay, company code and founder. Lead manager. The lead manager code is the code of the lead manager and the company code is the code of the working company. Senior manager. The senior manager code is the code of the senior manager. The lead manager code is the code of its lead manager and the company code is the code of the working company. Okay, so we can follow the hierarchy from company code and the founder to the lead manager to the senior manager and here to the employee right here and here we have the normal manager okay founder lead manager senior manager manager employee so let's see the sample we have the founders monica and samantha and here is the output that they are getting so what do we want company code founder name total number of lead managers senior managers and employees okay so you could think that you could just get like select Select founder, no, select company code, founder, total number of lead managers, lead manager code, let's get lead manager code, Sen senior manager code. So let's first just get all the columns that we need and total number of employees. So we need the employee code. We want to get this from so let's get this from this table, company, company code, under manager code, the manager code, employee code from company. So the company only has the company code and the founder. And we also want the lead manager code, the senior manager code and the employee code. 
So we want to get the from company, the company code and the founder name, and then we make a left join. We, we cannot get everything from company. That's why we have to also get the employee table. Left join employee E company C on E dot, what can we join them? The company code. Company code equals C dot company code. Let's run this code. Ambiguous column name, company code. Okay. We get this from the C dot company code. So here we have a company code column. That company code is both in the table company and in the table employee. So you have to specify with the C because we named it as C, the company. You have to specify C dot company code. So you get the right, so you get one of them because SQL doesn't know which column from which table it should get put out here. Now we got an, a result. And now let's order this. Order by company code is candy. So in let's company code is candy. Yes, that is true. And we only want to get unique values. What we have to do First, we have to also do a count because we want the total number. And then we also have lead manager, senior manager, employee. There is one missing and that is the manager. Let's see, we had somebody else here. Senior manager, manager. Manager, number of employees, total number of managers. So he comes between the senior manager and the employee. Manager code. So we want to get a total number and then we have to make a count and we don't want duplicates values and then we make a distinct from the lead manager code. Now we make a count distinct in the senior manager code. Count distinct from the manager code. We do a count distinct from the employee code. Whenever you do count or sum or average or any aggregation function, and you're not just giving out one column, like you're just giving out count distinct lead manager code, but you're also giving out other columns that are not aggregated, then you have to group the results. And how do you group them? You group them by the columns that you don't aggregate because you want to count that for each founder and company code. That's how you want to count them. And then you have to also group them by these columns. Group by C dot company code and by the founder. And there we have the result. So we already have the right result. We already got the problem solved, but the problem is not really solved. It's, it is working out here, but it should not work out actually for all cases. I'm just making this pretty here. So we have the one river line. So we got the congratulation. We have passed the sample test case and everything is fine. Why is this still not the right solution? It is still not the right solution because what we actually should do is we should join from the company table over the lead manager, over the senior manager, over the manager table into the employee table. Because now we are joining, we're skipping all these tables, the table senior manager, this table manager, and we're just joining the lead manager table with the employee table. So we are assuming that we get in every row between. So why should we not get the right solution? If we look at the sample and we would just join the above table, the company table, I uh, know the, if we just join the company table here with the founder, 
with the employee table in this example with Monica and Samantha, then we would have in this employee table SM1 and SM3. But here in between in the senior manager table you can see SM1, SM2 and SM3. And this SM2 row is not in the final employee table. Now how could that happen? That is because in the employee table you get one row for every employee and you get the employee codes and the employee's manager and the manager senior manager and his lead manager and then comes the founder or the company code in this case which is uh, the same uh, row as a uh, row number as also the founder there's one company code for every founder and the sm2 is not here because the sm2 the senior manager does not is not leading any manager and because he has no manager this manager is also not leading any employees because there is no manager he's a senior manager but he does not have anybody below his hierarchy maybe he's just a project consultant or whatever you can think of and that is why you would actually get not not get the right solution in this case and you would have to join from company over lead manager, over senior manager, over manager, over employee. So you are sure that you get all the people in the hierarchy in the end as a result and you don't miss any of them that they might not have any one below them. So how would that look like if you would do it right? So there are a couple things that we are already good. We can group this by company code founder, that is fine. The order by company code scanning is also working good. It's how we want it. The left join employee on the company on employee. That's not how we will do it. So how would we do it so we would get it right, even if there will be a case like here now. Now we got the congratulations and we got it right because there is not this case. But actually you would miss rows if you will solve it like that in the real in a real case. So how do we do it? We make the left join from the company to the next table, to the next person below the founder, and it will be the lead manager. So we have to join the lead manager table. Left join lead manager, and how would I would advise you is if you have lead manager, you make it an alias LM. If you have the company, you make alias C, employee E, and so on. So you make lead manager LM on, now you should say what you join on, LM dot, and it will be the company code. Because you have in both tables the company code, and it's also unique for both tables. So that's a good way to join these tables. Company code equals C dot company code. So now we have the lead manager in here. And we count the distinct lead manager code and therefore we use also the lead manager table. So we take it from, now we say which table we want it from, from LM table, the lead manager table, dot lead manager code. Okay, so now we joined the company table with the lead manager. Now we go next to the hierarchy, from the lead manager to the senior manager. How do we do it? How do we represent that in our SQL? We make a left join senior manager table. Senior manager table is called senior manager. Now we make it an alias SM, senior manager. And you make on SM dot. And now what, what do we want to join it by? We have the lead manager code here, the company code. We also have the lead manager code here. So we want to join it on the lead manager. So we get the senior man, we get all the senior manager for any lead manager that will be in the above table here. And because we also have the lead manager here, we join it on the lead manager code. Lead manager code equals, so we have to join the lead manager table, lm dot lead manager code. That's why it's important that you get the lead manager code also from the lead manager table. 
and not from the senior manager table, which you could also get because it also has a lead manager code, but you will not be sure that you get every lead manager. That's why you have to get it, the lead manager code from the lead manager. Now we joined the senior manager and we can get the senior manager code from the senior manager table. That's why we put SM in front of senior manager code. Next one up is the manager code. So you already know what we have to do. We have to join the manager table. We have a manager table simply called manager. Let's do a left join on the manager table M on and the manager table. What, for, what can we join here? We probably take the senior manager code because we have it above here and we are sure that we have for every manager we have a senior manager there's not a null in the senior manager everyone has a supervisor but not everyone that is a supervisor has one below we have the manager m on which is by the way also an assumption that i'm putting here that every manager has a senior manager that could also be that some people do not have a supervisor. In that case, you would have to deal with that. But now we are assuming that every manager has a supervisor. Manager M on M dot. So what did we say? We wanted to join with the senior manager code. So we take senior manager code equals. Now we take the other table. Which one did we want to join? The senior manager table is yes, sm dot senior manager. Okay, now we got this one. Uh, and by the way, we also have to get the manager now from the manager table. So we write m dot manager code. Now let's get the last one, the employee. How do we join the employee? We join the employee table over the manager table always from the table above so left join we by the way we take the left join so that we always keep every row from the table before in the manager table so if you're doing the left join you always keep the left side of the join so in the left join manager you always keep all the rows from the manager if you join it on the senior manager code. Even if you have like a senior manager code in the senior manager table that you don't have in the manager, then you will always keep the manager rows. We make a left join. Now, what, what do we want to get now? We want to get the employee table. Employee B on and what do we want to join we want to join on the manager e dot manager code equals m dot manager code now this left join doesn't make sense we don't need this anymore so let's see if we get this one right now Invalid column name, senior manager, line 11. Okay, let's see what's wrong here. Ah, senior manager, okay, we had to write senior manager code. We forgot one thing, employee code, we also want to get from the employee table, so we write e dot employee code. The employee code is not anywhere else, so we could also not write it, but it makes it more clearer if we write an e before. Now we are processing. Now because we have to make four joints, it takes longer, but here we are. Now we also have the right solution and we would also get the managers and the people in the hierarchy that have no one below them. So there you go, that's the solution. All right, so now we are solving the weather observation station 20. So the text is a median is defined as a number separating the higher half of a data set from the lower half. 
Query the median of the northern latitudes from station and round your answer to four decimal places. The station table is described as follows. Okay, we have ID, city, state, northern latitude and western longitude. Whereas our most important column is here the northern latitude. So the output should be median of the northern latitudes. And the condition is round answer to four decimal places. Okay, let's first select northern latitude from station to get a feel for it. All right and maybe also order by northern latitude. All right, so we have numbers. The smallest one is 25.07 and the biggest one is 144.98 and it is 499 rows. Okay, so the median is actually a statistical term and for that I'm going to give you a little bit of background information how we can calculate that in SQL. So the median is a special definition from quantiles. The median is a special term. It is the 50% quantile. And this, it is defined like that, that if we have an even number, in case of even number in the data set, for example, the number four, so we have data set one, two, three, four. Median equals the two numbers in the middle divided. So with the data set of four, there will be the two numbers in the middle because you don't really have a middle. So we define the median as two and three divided. So actually we can see 0 0.5 median with 10 numbers, which is an even number would be actually not five. It would be between five and six. So it would be 5.5 here in this example above. So in this example, one, two, three, four, it is two numbers in the middle, two and three. 2 plus 3 divided by the total number, so 2, 2 numbers, and it is 2 plus 3 is 5, divided by 2 is 2.5, so that is the median here. And now we have in case of odd number in the data set, so for example, for example, data set one, two, three, four, five. So this is an odd number in the data set. Now it's very easy to make the median because the median is the one in the middle. So we have five numbers and we have an exact middle. So we have median equals the number that divides the lower half and the upper half which is three. So three, two are below and two are up. Okay, so this is very easy. So now, thankfully, we also have a, an odd number here. So we have, if we count the latitude, for example, we can see how much entries we have in this data set. So we have 499 entries. So we have exactly one number that is in the middle of these entries and that will be the median. And to uh, calculate the median, there are different approaches. Uh, thankfully, in MSSQL, there is a function that can count the median. We have to only customize this a little bit. So we have here percentile count, which gives us exactly these quantiles, which we talked earlier about. And this is the syntax from it. So we have the percentile count. We, ha we have to give, for example, 25% uh, um, quantile or 30%, which is written in uh, 0 0.25 or 0 0.3, or the median, which is 0 0.5, which is what we are needing now. 
Then we say within the group, within what group do we actually want to calculate this percentile and we want to calculate it of course in the group of the northern latitudes. So between all northern latitudes we want to get this median. So order by a northern latitude will be the solution and then we have a third condition that which is over partition by. So this is a bit tricky because it says we can partition it by something for example by the city then we would get only the northern latitudes from the city but we actually don't want to partition by anything so because we want to get the median from all the result set so actually what we have to do is partition by null so let's take from this example let's copy this code here to make it a bit more clear and let's write this here in the select clause so now we have this code and now as we discussed earlier percentile quant 0.5 is what we need because this is the median the 50% quantile and now we have here the median so within group order by not pH rate but by the northern latitude we want to order and now partition by if we give something by partition by it will always be wrong so for example partition by northern latitude. I'm just going to do that as an example. So I partition by northern latitude. So every northern latitude will calculate their own median, which of course results in a solution that we don't want because everyone is their own little group. So it's actually just the same northern latitude. It's just one data set and the um, median of one um, partition is also the same northern latitude. So this is the wrong solution with 499 entries. What we actually want is we don't want to partition at all. We want to over the whole result set. So we make partition by null. Then we run the code again. So now we have this number, which seems to be right. So it was between 25, I think, and 100 something. So yeah, it could be the right number, 83, but we have 499 entries. We don't want so many entries. So I'm gonna select the first one. It's actually always the same entry. We just want to have one median solution here. So I'm gonna select the first entry. Okay, so that looks good. So now we have just one more condition that it is rounded to four decimal places. Okay, so what can we do? We can cast this one. So we write a cast before this. Cast is working like that, that you have the term that you want to cast. And this is uh, this function. And then I write as decimal. And then I give how many digits before the comma. I, I say maximum can be 10 digits. It can also be less. In this case, it's just two digits before the comma or before the point, the separator. And in this case, it can be up to 10 digits. And after the comma, after the separator, it should be four decimal places, exactly as requested in the beginning. So this is the cast function that will turn this one into four decimal places after the separator. And as median, we just write it behind as the name of the column, which is not represented here in the output, but we still give it a name. And now we should get the right results. Let's see. And there you go. Let's take the report. You are given two tables, students and grades. Students contains three column columns, ID, name and marks. Here are the columns, ID, name, marks. Grades contains the following data, grade, min mark, max mark. Caddy gives Eve a task to generate a report containing three columns, name, grade, and mark. Okay, now we can already get the output. Output should be name, grade, mark. Katie doesn't want the names of those students who received a grade lower than eight. Condition one, no students, no student, no student name. Okay, no student name, grade lower than eight. The report must be in descending order by grade. Condition two, grade order by grade. 
sending. If there is more than one student with the same grade, 8 to 10, assigned to them, order those particular students by their name alphabetically. Okay, order by grade, condition 3, grade 8 to 10, order by name, which is the second order. The first order is the grade order. If the grade is lower than 8, use null as their name and list them by their grades in descending order. Okay. So basically everybody has to be listed in descending order. Use null as their name. Okay. Condition 4. Student 8 with grade 1 to 7. Name is null. So he should be called null. List them by their grades in descending order. Yes, we got that also for the one with the name. But the second order with the name should be by name alphabetically. Got it. If there is more than one student with the same grade 1 to 7 assigned to them, order those particular students by their marks in the skinning order. Okay. Condition 5. Student with grade 1 to 7. Order by mark is skinning. Write a query to help Eve. A lot of conditions here. So let's see the sample. Here we have a sample input and the sample output. So Maria, Jane, Julia, Scarlett both had 8 or higher and the other ones had nulls. So they are not listed. They are ordered by the names and they are ordered by their grade, ordered by their mark as candy. By their mark. Okay, let's get out select name grade mark from so how do we get that out name grade mark so we can get it from students table students and grades from students now we make a join. Students S. And we want the grades. G. On. How can we join these tables? Maybe we can make on marks between min mark and max mark. Let's see if this works on marks. So this comes from the students table on s dot marks between g dot min mark. And g dot max mark. The expression of non-boolean type is specified in a context where a condition is expected near between. Mm. Boolean type specified in a context where a condition is expected near between. Okay. On S dot marks, maybe like this, where S dot marks between this guys. Yeah, maybe this is working. Okay, this is not working. How can we put this together? The students and the grades. So first select name and grade. We don't have name and grade? No, we have just have name and marks. All right, we take name and marks. 
let's get a feel for this table. Okay, we have 21 columns, uh, 21 rows. So how can we join these tables together? So maybe we can get this working with between. Let's see if we can get this working. So let's just try join with between. It's working. It will join between versus where between. So select something from table, join table B on table A, table B. Where B dot field two between. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So you have to first equal them and then you write between. Huh, interesting. Okay. So what do you do? Join grades G on S dot marks. And then you write here first you have to write equals. So you write G dot marks. G dot marks equals S dot marks. And then you write where S dot marks between G dot min mark and G dot max mark. Maybe it works like this. No, it doesn't. Why not? So select something yeah, from table 1A. Join table to B on A dot field equals B dot field and B dot field between A dot field and A dot field three. Okay. Maybe like this then. Let's equal S dot marks. Do we have marks in both tables? Is it called like that? Ah, there is no marks. That's why it's like that. And how do we join it? That's why it doesn't work. Because we don't even have a genome marks here. Join grade G, G on S dot marks. S dot marks between Between G dot min mark and G dot max mark. If it's working, maybe yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now we're talking. Now we are talking. So we take the name marks. And actually, what did you want it to have? Name, grade, and mark. Okay, okay. Name, grade, and marks. So this is working pretty good now. What do we want? So we want the one condition, condition one, no student name with grade lower than eight, no problem. Make a case condition on the name, for example. I think we're gonna do this case when grade lower than 8 then name else so when the grade is lower than 8 then we want the name else we want null and as we are not seeing there anyway but we just write it like this in this name we did it exactly the wrong way around. So when grade is lower than eight, then we want the name. No, we want the name when it's bigger or equal eight. Then we want the name. So that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Now we want order by 
What's the condition? Great descending. Descending. It was also the condition, yes. Order by great descending. The names should be ordered alphabetically, right? Order by name alphabetically, yes. The grade eight to ten. Okay, name descending maybe. That alphabetically, yes, that is the case. And now the problem is the notes. The notes are the problems. Twenty-one, twenty-one cases, twenty-one rows. By the way, do we have twenty-one rows in total? Let's check this one first. It's 21 rows, the right row number. We can check it just by selecting star from students. Let's see if we have 21. Yes, we have 21. Okay, so this is right from this point of view. And now we have a problem that we have to order the nulls differently than the ones before. So, how can you do that? Well, you can make two tables. One table that has the names and one table that has the notes. And then you can... Can you make a different order then? Actually, when you join them together or when you unionize them, you do make the same order again. So now they should order by mark is kending. Oh, but we can just make a third order, right? So we make great descending. We make name as kending. Yes. Name is as kending alphabetically. B is first, A, B, C, D, E. You know the gist. And then we can just, because they all have the same name anyway, so the second order basically doesn't affect them at all. We can just say the third order is by Mark is kending, by Mark's is kending. That will not affect this order at all. And anyway, it's the third order, so yeah, I think that's how it works. Mark's is kending. We can basically make as much order bias as we want, as we like, as we have columns. And this will order only the nulls because they will not get any more ordered by the name is kidding. They all have the same name here. They all have null. So the third order will grip and it should bring us the result. Let's see. Yes, we got it. We got the result. Congratulations. So now you have it. Let's go with another challenge. So what do we do now? Let's see our top competitors. Julia just finished conducting the coding contest and she needs your help assembling the leaderboard. Write a query to print the respective hacker ID and name of hackers who achieved full scores for more than one challenge. Order your output in descending order by the total number of challenges in which the hacker earned a full score. If more than one hacker received full scores in the same number of challenges, then sort them by scanning hacker ID. Okay, let's look this up. Of course, we're going to do our notes again. What do we want to have? What do we want to give Julia today? She just finished conducting a coding contest and she needs your help assembling the leaderboard. Write a query to print the respective hacker ID. Okay, we want the hacker ID. And name of hackers. Got it. And name. We achieved full scores for more than one challenge. Condition one. Full score for more than one challenge. Condition two, order by order by the total number of challenges in which the hacker earned a full score. Order by challenges. 
if more than one hacker received full scores in same number of challenges, then so second order scanning hacker ID. Hacker ID is scanning. So what I'm thinking here is we want to print the respective hacker ID and name of hackers who achieved full scores for more than one challenge. So what would it be if we can actually get a table with the hacker ID and the name that they achieved full score for more than one challenge. And then from that table that we already created, we're just, so first we make a table where we count all the challenges that every hacker ID made, where he got the full score. And then from that table, we only take those hacker ID and name that have more than one challenge mastered with the full score. So let's first get a feel for the tables. We have one table hackers here. So let's take the hacker ID and the name that's already our output. Select, of course, we want to select it from what is the table? Hackers. Okay, how many do we got? We have 200, 200 hackers here. Okay. So now we would also like to know the challenges. What? First, what is the number of challenges that every hacker did? Maybe that will also be interesting just to know. Total number, usually you count them. Well, like you say, you count them, the total number. Usually you need the count function. So the difficult level is the level of difficult good difficulty of the challenge and score is the score of the challenge for the difficulty level. Do we need the difficulty level? Not really. Challenges. The challenge ID is the ID of the challenge. The hacker ID is the ID of the hacker who created the challenge. And difficulty level is the level of difficulty of the challenge. Now we have submissions. The submission ID is the ID of the submission. Hacker ID is the ID of the hacker who made the submission. Challenge ID is the ID of the challenge that the submission belongs to. And score is the score of the submission. So here we have a hackers table and now we have a difficulty level and the score. Okay, we need the difficulty table because we have the scores there. They look like the total, the full scores. And here we have the scores from the hackers. Okay. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So here we have hacker ID and here we have also hacker ID. So this one so this one is a tricky one because here we have the hacker ID that we, from the submissions, that the hacker ID is scored, which is the hacker ID that we want. Here's another hacker ID from the hacker that created the challenges, the challenge that made the challenges. And this hacker ID, totally not important for our, for our task and can also be confusing. So. We don't want to, we want to ignore the ones from the challenges because we don't need the information who created the challenge. That is not part of our, of our query here. So the question is, how do we know which challenge they get full score? So first we could just count the challenges that they made. Let's make count from distinct. Maybe they did the same challenge more than one time. I don't know. Challenge id in the count distinct from the challenge id and then of course we don't get this just from the hackers we have to left join them and we can get join them we have here the submissions table submissions s on s dot hacker id equals h dot hacker id as we call it H, we also have to call it H here. So we all, on this one, we also have to specify from hackers. We want this from hackers and the challenge ID, of course, we want from the submissions table. From this code, uh, we, we forgot the group by here. Yeah. Here we have a pro problem is invalid in the selectors because it is not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause. No, we don't have a group by clause. So we want to count the challenges. Why do you need a group by? Because you have an aggregate function and you have more than one column. You actually have three columns here. So if you make a count, you want to know what do you, 
you, what do you want to count? You want to count the tenant ID. Okay, great. But under what group, like for what group, like just for every row, then you always get one if you just count the tenant ID for every row. Every row has one challenge. If you want to get it for every name, you have to group it by the name. You have to tell SQL. And if you want to get it for every hacker ID and name, you have to group this. So anything that is not an account or an aggregate function, you have to group it by this columns. If you also put them out, if you have them in the select, group by age.hacker ID and age.name. So now we have all the hackers. How many were they? 200. And with the challenges that they made, that is great. But we really, what we really would like to get is the hackers. Maybe we can also get their scores. That will also be interesting to get their scores. S dot score, because we want to know full scores. We want to, it is not contained in the group by, of course, we have to put it here, like I just said. We want to know in which challenge the hacker did the full score. Zero, they always have zero. How is that possible? Okay, a lot of zeros. Are these the scores from the hackers? Is it possible? Let's order them by the score. So we got a bunch of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we got all kinds of scores here. Okay, that looks about right. Could be the scores, because we also have a lot of uneven numbers. Yeah, I guess it's all right, 120. Yeah. Do we have so much? We have so much. Okay, so now we have, does that make sense? So we are grouping by four name and hacker ID. We count how many challenges we have made. Rose made 12 challenges. But what is it for score then? Because we don't have a score for every challenge here written down. So actually we have to get all the challenges first out. We can get all the scores for it. So the group by just get, you want to get all the scores from every challenge. We don't want to group them by the challenge. Now we have a lot of more. We have here the challenge ID and we have the score and now we want to get the total score from that challenge. We would also like to get that. And how do we get that? That is the score from difficulty table. So we have to get this somehow. Difficulty table, I would put a D, D dot score, for the score from the difficulty table, as diff score. Now we get it from the hackers. How do we get the difficulty table into this one now? So we have the difficulty level and the score. But how do we, can, how can we join this one? So we actually have to join it from, from submission to challenges to difficulty. I think that's the way we have to go because we cannot join from submissions to difficulty, can we? No, to join this on the score wouldn't make any sense. So we have to join it from submissions over this challenge ID to the challenges and from the challenges on the difficulty level to the difficulty, okay. So first we put the submissions on there. We make left join on the challenges. Challenges table, C on S dot submissions table, challenge ID. Yes, challenge ID equals C dot challenge ID equals S dot challenge ID. So we need another left join. And now we want to join, we want to join the next table. Here we have challenges, now we want the difficulty table. So let's get difficulty. D on D dot difficulty level equals C dot difficulty level. Now we can also get the difficulty score. Okay, that's cool. So now we have here the score and here we have the maximum score. 
which we got from the difficulty table. So now we can see Rose with the hacker ID 72 has scored zero in this challenge. The maximum score was 60. And this was her challenge ID. That was a challenge ID from this challenge. So that's pretty cool because now we can get all what we really interested is in just the full scores. We just want the full scores, right? So let's get full scores. Where is dot score, the score from the hacker that is from the submissions table, has to equal difficulty table. Okay, now we go. Here we have all the scores, all the things, all the scores, where the score equals the submission score. It's great. So that's exactly what we now want. And what do we want now? We want not every challenge out. We want to count, actually. We want to count this for every the challenge ID we don't want. We want to count for Kevin, for example, how many times he has made a full score. How many rows like that he has in this table. So by which do we want to group on? How do we have to? Well, we could just count the challenge, right? Yeah, we can count the challenge now. We can ch count the challenge ID because now we just have challenge IDs where we have full score. So we count the challenge IDs and we don't need the scores here. We want to count all the challenge IDs because there are anyway challenges where we can just have full scores here. So that are exactly the challenges that we're interested in. We are counting them and we group them by the name and the hacker ID because we want to know how many challenges has Kevin the full score, how many challenges Robin has a full score. So we group by h.hacker ID and h.name. Order by score. Okay, we don't need this one really. Give me out something. Perfect. And now we get the ones that they have the full score. And now we actually wanted the ones that have full score for more than one challenge. So everyone that has just a one here, he should go out. Where D score, S score equals D score. And now comes another condition. And this looks a bit ugly here. This should all line. We can leave this one scores actually to be printed so this one can go away we can make this nice and look like a nice river line here we need this also here at the same level but we need the order by soon so the second condition for score and more than one challenge and count from s dot challenge id is bigger than one Okay, I uh, got it. An aggregate may not appear in the WHERE clause unless it is in a subquery contained in a having clause or a select list. And the column B aggregate is an outer reference. Okay, got it. So he doesn't want me to let to put it in the WHERE clause, but I can put it in the having clause. So the having clause is like the WHERE clause, except that it is going after the table has been created. Then you can put another condition, another where condition on it. So it comes right in the end. So we put having right in the end, having more than one challenge, having count from challenge ID bigger one. Also get the note from here in a having clause. So this is one possibility how we can put that here. Okay, now we already got the right output. We have the hacker ID and the name which we want. And here are the number of challenges, which we don't need, but we put it out now for testing with a full score. So now let's check all the conditions. So we want to output hacker ID and name. 
So we have Hacker ID and name. This one we don't have to output anyway. We can just comment this out. Condition one, full scope for more than one challenge. Yes, we met that. Condition two, order by challenges. Okay, we didn't order yet. We have to order it. Order by count from challenge ID. Order by count from challenge ID. Order is hacker ID and scanning. See if this is even working. Okay, we have here a comma. Because we comment this out, this column, we have an extra comma here that we don't need anymore now. Incorrect syntax near the keyword having. Why do we have an incorrect syntax here? Maybe it's because of the, and this other aggregate function here. Let's see. So, I changed a bit here, but I think maybe Maybe we have a wrong order here from this having SQL. Group by having. Okay, I think the order by comes even after the having. Maybe that's the problem here. This one out. Read again. Okay, now we got it. And now we have one more, the second order. So we just have the first order here. No, we have the second order count challenge ID and hacker ID is scanning. Still got the wrong answer. Hmm. So we have the hacker ID and the name. Full score for more than one challenge. Yes, that is correct. And we order it by total number of challenges. Order your output in descending order by the total number of challenges in which the hacker earned a full score. If more than one hacker received full scores in the same number of challenges, then sort them by ascending hacker ID. In descending order. Ah, oh, okay. I didn't put descending here, did I? So here I put ascending, but here I have to put descending. Order by challenges descending. That was the problem and the requirement I didn't write it wrote it correctly. So maybe this was no, we still don't have it. That's peculiar. Okay, yeah of course we have to put this column away. Let's run this again. Nope, still have a comma too much. Let's go. Yes. Yes, we did it. Finally we also have it. Now you have the solution here. Welcome Harry Potter nerds. So today we are gonna go over a problem with a Harry Potter contact and it's called Ollivander's Inventory. First we are gonna look very closely at the text and the requirement. Of course write down our goals. What do we really want to solve here? And then we are gonna start solving the problem. Harry Potter and his friends are at Ollivander's with Ron, finally replacing Charlie's old broken wand. Hermione decides the best way to choose is by determining the minimum number of gold galleons needed to buy each non-evil wand of high power and age. Write a query to print the ID, age, coins needed and power of the wands that Ron's interested in. Okay, so already we have some information about the possible output we have to get here. So let's write it down. Output, what should we get? Write a query to print the ID. Okay, age, points needed and power. So we have to get four columns in the end. ID, age, coins needed and power of the ones that Ron's interested in. So what should the ones be? The minimum number of gold galleons. So we write context, minimum number of gold galleons to buy each non-evil wand of power and age. It says high power and age, but high is a bit misleading here. So we really want for any power and age, we want uh, the minimum number of gold galleons that you can get this wand with. And then afterwards, sort it in order of descending power. Okay, so order by power descending. If more than one wand has the same power, sort the results in order of descending age. Okay, age descending, if it's more. Okay, so the input column is the following. We have two 
two tables, wands and wands property. ID of the wand, code is the code of the wand, coins needed is the total or number of gold galleons needed to buy the wand and power denotes the quality of the wand. The higher the power, the better the wand is. Okay. Wands property, wand is the ID of the wand, code is the code, coins needed and power once property so the code we have here we can see already code is the same column as the column in once so we later have to connect these tables once and once property and we can see that we can do it through the column code because they both have the column code okay the code is the code of the wand age is the age of the wand and is evil denotes whether the wand is good for the dark arts and we remember from the beginning that we don't want is evil and here is something also very important the mapping between code and age is one one meaning that if there are two pairs code 1 h1 and code 2 h2 then code 1 is not equal to code 2 and h1 is not equal to h2 now what does that mean the mapping between code and h is 1 1 so we have code and h right code in relationship to age and we are just talking about the wands property table right about the second table here so the relationship between code and age is one one what does it mean one so if age if there's a code for age then there is exactly one code for each age and for every code there's exactly one age also the other way around. So to make it even more clear, we can look at some examples here. So here's the ones property table. And here we have the code one, the code two, the code three, the code four, the code five. And you will never see a double code in here or triple uh, times the one. The one will always just be one time. It will just be in this one row in the first row. And the code three will also just exist one time in this table. In the other table on the other side it can exist multiple times and this is it has to. I mean this is the way that we will also order them. But here it will only exist one time and also the age will only exist one time. So if we have here an age of 40 and with a code of 2, then you will not find the age 40 anywhere else in this in this once property table again. And also you will not find the code 2 anywhere else in this once property table. So that basically what it means that the mapping is 1-1 one, one in this table. So now we have here a sample output and we can see now what do we actually want to measure. We have the once table here. So here you can see the wands table. Now what do we actually want to figure out? So first we want to figure out for each code and for each power which is the minimum coins needed. So let's start with the first code here. It's the code 4. So the codes usually exist multiple times in this wands table. So you have the code 4 here and you have it again here and you have it again here and you have it again here. So now this this code 4 is four times in this table and now we look at the power. Is there any wands with the same power? This 4 code here has the power 8 and it has the power 5. Okay so these are not the same powers. And here we have the power 6. Okay, power 6 and power 8 only exist one time. So they definitely get one row of their own in our results table. So here we have 2 times the power 5. And now that is what it, what it was meant with minimum number of gold galleons to buy each non-evil ones. So now we have a situation where we have 2 times the same power. 5 and 5. So let's take this one away. So this is this is what we are interested in here. The 5 and the 5. And now we have coins needed for this 5 and 5. And now we have to make a decision. Which one should we choose here to get for our final results table? The one with 504 coins or with 7710 coins and we want to get the one with the minimum number of gold guardians needed which will be 504 as it is smaller than 7710. So this one will not appear in our results table. It will only be this wand with the ID 10 with the code 4. The coins needed 504 and the power 5. And the other one will not appear in the results table. Okay, so let's try this with another example, with the next example. And by the way, we also have to look for the code 4 in our wands property that it is not evil and is evil is zero so the code 4 really was not evil okay so now 
let's look at the next one so we have the code 3 let's look at the once property table code 3 is evil so we don't have to regard this code at all because it is evil it is not relevant for the results table so 333 three, three, it's going to be disregarded anyway so let's look at the one we have the code 1 here here we also have code 1 and is evil a zero so it will happen it will come into the results table it is a non-evil want so let's look at all the want contenders here one one and that's it they just have a two times the one and they both have different powers so they will both go into our results table and we have the id five power two coins needed 6020 and age is 45. okay so how do we actually write this in a query now let's start at the wants property table because we can see here from the wants property we have to join it in the end with the wants table but we also only want to join with these rows that they have the minimum number of coins for each power so let's start small now and first make a select star from wants property let's just get the wants property out here Okay, so this is the columns for the ones property. We cannot see the columns here really, so it's better to write them out. What were the columns here? Code, age, and is evil. So we have the columns code, age, and is evil. Okay, so our output columns are ID, age, coins needed, and power. So they are very different than what the columns are that we have right now. But we are just at the start. So we looked at the wants property table. We just gave out all the table with no conditions. Now we can remember in the beginning it says we want to buy each non-evil one. So we can already make one condition where is evil equals to zero because that are the non-evil ones so now we have 150 here and that should already be less now okay so now we have only 100 left so 50 ones apparently were evil and they were they're out of the selection now which is good because we didn't don't want to have them in the output so what else do we need in the output so we need the id the eight we have the coins needed and the power so id coins needed and power are all columns that we will only get from the one so we have to join our ones property table somehow with the ones table but we only we don't want to join with all the columns uh, with all the rows from the ones table because some rows we don't want to have if there is the same power and the same code then we only want the row that has the minimum coins needed so let's look at the wants table and then let's figure out which rows we actually want from the wants and which we don't want in the end in our query and then if we if we figured out the right rows that we want to have then we can join it with the wants property and then we will have our result so let's put this one aside for a moment non evil wants in the wants property that is what we figured out so far and let's select all now from the wants table so what columns do we have here id code coins needed and power id code coins needed and power from wants table okay so now we only have we have every row here and we have 726 and probably even more but it's cutting it off here so now as we said we want the rows that have the same power and the same code we don't we only want to have the ones with the minimum coins needed so what we can do here is we can number the rows and the ones with the minimum of coins needed we give them the number one and if they have higher coins and the same power and the same code then we give them the number two number three number four and so on and then in the end when we join it with the non-evil ones we only give out the number one from this rows and then that way we disregarded every row that we didn't want and then we only get the relevant rows but how do we do that so how we can do that is through a function it's called row number and it's a very useful function in a lot of scenarios 
So you should definitely get familiar with that. Row number over. So let's make a easy example of row number so you can really understand what it means. So let's row number always means row number is basically just giving every row in your table a number and it always needs an order by as you also put here down below an order by at your table same it goes in the order by as a, in the row number function and why it needs an order by because it has to know uh, which number should be number one and which number should be the last number and all in between it has to know that so we have to give it an order so let's say order by the code for example because in the end we also want for each code and each power we want to order that so we also write order by code in the table let's give that out now ah, of course we write as row number we also give this row this column a name okay so now we have a result now that let's look at this result for a moment in excel because we can get a better grasp on it here as we also have the columns standing here now we gave a row number to every row one two three four five and how is it ordered like who is number one number one is the code number one and then it goes on and it just gives every row a number okay so far that is not very useful for us so we have to give more condition to this row number so we, what we can also do in row number is we can partition our result set so now we just gave all our rows so if we have 700 rows we get 700 numbers here now out in row number but we can also partition our rows so that let's do it partition by the code so what is going to happen now it's going to start again counting from one if there comes a new code it counts again from one so let's give that out okay and now let's copy paste it again into excel okay so what you can what we did here now so you can see row number is not any for every row it doesn't give the same consecutive number but it actually does here until seven and why until seven because we have from code we have seven times the same code here one 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 seven times and so it gives the number until seven and now because we made a partition by code now it starts again with a new partition and it starts again at one for the next code the code number two and it starts counting again now what did we actually wanted we wanted for the same power the one with the same power we only wanted the minimum number of coins so now we give every every new code we give a new number but actually we want to give a new number to every new code and power in combination so we can partition it again as we can see here partition by code we don't only want to partition by code but also by power so we want to partition by code and power so if every if in one code it starts with a new power then we also want to give it a new number and we also want to order by code and power and here in the table we also order it by code and power okay so let's look at this result one more time okay so now we have row number one two and then it already starts again at one so why do we have one two here so we have the code one it's the same code but the code is seven times but we have also the same power and we have it two times power one and power one here and so we have also the row number number one and number two so why is that a good thing now that we partition it exactly in this way because in the end we want for every want that has the same code and the same power we only want to give out the one with the minimum coins needed so we have to have at this position number one we want to have the one the want with the minimum coins needed so right now at position number one what do we have coins needed 5384 and at position number two we have 2701 so we have actually the lower coins which we want at the number one we have at the number two so we have kind of have to switch that around so that we have the minimum number of coins needed at the number one position for the same power 
And if we then say we want to join it with the other table, but only take the ones that uh, has the row number one, and we have uh, we have uh, corrected this with the minimum number of code in in the top in the one, then we actually get exactly the rows that we want to have in our result set. And that's why the row number function is so powerful. So what do we want? We want the minimum number rows at the first position. So we order it by code power but also by coins needed, coins needed. And it, we can write here as scanning, but it is as scanning anyway. So you can write it or not, and that's the default value for it. And as scanning, as we know, means from the lowest to the highest. So now we have the lowest at the top, at the number one spot, exactly what we want for our row number. So let's run this again and look one last time in Excel. So let's copy this code. Okay, so now we can see one, two, row number, yes, and then it starts a new one because it is a new power for the code. And now we have coins needed 2701 before 5384. So we have it exactly how we need it. We have at number one, we have the minimum coins needed for this power. And then we know we definitely going to choose this one and this is going to be in the output set. And now we have, we can see again here at one, two, three, for example, we also have uh, three times the same power with the same code, this time code two. And we want again the minimum number of coins needed. And this is 1467, as we can see here, it's lower than the other two numbers. And now we only want the first, no, only the row with the row number one. So now this is prepared perfectly in order to join it with our other table. So now what are we gonna do is, we're gonna put this in a with clause, in a with statement, and we are gonna call this min coins, because we figured out the minimum number of coins for each power for every wand. And this is gonna be our first table that we later are gonna join with the other one. And now we had our non-evil ones in the ones property table. And we're going to put this one down below. And the order by we can actually not have it anymore here in this table, but it doesn't really matter for now. And we can only order it here in the last one, but this is all really what we need. So what do we want to get out? So first, what, how should the joins look like? So now we have the ones property. We have to join it with our min coins that we just created here. So join, so once property, we give it an abbreviation WP, join min coins, we call it MC, on MC, so what was the common column? It was the code. So both have the column code, MC code equals WP code. And, and now comes the very important condition, row number should be equal to one. So where is evil is equals zero, we already have it in one's property. So now let's look at the output columns. What do we need? We need the ID of the wand. And okay, we get the ID. Then what do we need? We need the age of the wand. Yes. We need the coins needed. And we need the power of the wand. Okay, so we have all that. And we take this one away. Where is evil equals zero? That is also correct. And now we still have to order. Order by what? By power descending we should order and also by age descending. Okay, so now we have our min coins where we figured out with the help of the row number, which one has the minimum number of galleons to buy it. Then we joined it with the row number equals one. And we also put the order by clause. So let's see if this works now. And there you go. We find we have the solution again. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I see you in the next one. Hey everybody. The time finally came for the long awaited and much requested challenges problem on HackerRank. In this problem, we are going to use the with statement and the group by clause in a combination that you probably didn't see before. Are you excited? Then let's dive right in.
So let's start with this challenges problem. First of all, I want to tell you how we are going to approach this problem. So the first step is we're going to read the problem description. Second step, we're going to outline the output. What is the goal? What do we actually want to have? The third thing is we want to understand the problem. So we look at the sample input and output and we want to understand how we can solve this problem what should our code look like in the end. And the fourth one is we're going to start writing the query and solving the problem. Now notice here that we have three steps before we actually going to start writing the query because we make it clear in our heads and in our mind how we are actually going to solve this. And then it's much easier to actually solve it and to write the queries. Let's start with this. Julia asked her students to create some coding challenges. Write a query to print the hacker ID, name and the total number of challenges created by each student. Okay, so we already in the second sentence have the output here. So the output is hacker ID, name, total number of challenges by each student. Sort your results by the total number of challenges in descending order. So order by, total number challenges descending and we have also a second condition if more than one student created the same number of challenges then sort the result by the hacker id okay and then order by hacker id this order by is really going to be the easiest and now the last sentence if more than one student created the same number of challenges and the count is less than the maximum number of challenges created, then exclude those students from the result. So here we write a pseudocode, a code-like statement, if more than one student created the same number of challenges. More than one student with same number, then, and the count is less than the maximum count number of challenges challenges then exclude students so let's try to understand what does this actually mean so we can also put this in two parts here we have the first part we where we get just get hacker id name and total number of challenges by each student and now we have the second part which is going to be the harder part where we get this query if more than one student the same number and the count is less than the maximum number of challenges so what does it actually mean in order to understand this better we take the sample input here so now we have here the sample input and now we can uh, think about what the query should look like what should it solve so we have the hacker id rows with 5077 and let's look from the hacker id how often she submitted a challenge so we can see her here in the beginning one time two time three times and four times so she su submitted four challenges is she included or excluded at the result set in the end well we don't know yet right we just know that she made four challenges if somebody else did that also then she will be ex excluded. If not, she will be included. So let's look at Angela now. Angela has 21283. 21283. One time, two times, three times, four times, six times, seven times. So she has 21283 and it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six times sorry six times the challenges and now let's look at frank so angela and rose from this standpoint now they are both included because they have unique number of challenges so how many challenges has frank six two seven four three this is gonna be one time two times three times four times so frank has four times rose also has four times and they don't have the maximum number of challenges so the maximum number of challenges is six times because Angela has six times and they both have four times. So they will be excluded from the result set. They will not be in the result set. We know that by now. So let's look at Patrick, 88255. One time, two time, three times, four times, five times. So five times is going to be included. There's no problem there. And let's look at Lisa in the end. Lisa is just going to be one time. One time is also a unique number of challenges, so she will also be included. So now we have a good idea of what it should do, who should be included, who should be excluded. So let's start with the query now. We have it uh, just two tables, hackers table and challenges table, and they are get connected through the column hacker ID, which we can 
C and both tables here. So let's start maybe with a hacker's table with the hacker ID and the name. Select hacker ID name from hackers. Okay, so now we already have two of the three columns from the first part, hacker ID and name. But we also need the challenges, the total number of challenges by each student. How do we get that? We make a join with the challenges table. We also call hackers, we give it an abbreviation H. Challenges has the abbreviation C. On what do we combine them? On what do we connect them? On hacker ID. On C dot hacker ID equals H dot hacker ID. So now we are able to give out the challenge ID, which is the unique column in the challenge table. So we have H dot hacker ID, H dot name and C dot challenge ID. Okay, so we have the hacker ID, the name and the challenge ID. But we don't want actually want the challenge ID, but we want the total number of challenges by each student. So we want to count for each student how many challenges did he or she made. To count something, we use the count function. Count, and what do we want to count? The challenges. So we count c.challengeID as num, I call it num challenges, number of challenges. And if you use an aggregate function like count, you also have to group your results. We want to group by the hacker ID and by the name. Now, if you're in MySQL, you only need to group by hacker ID, but I am in MS SQL Server, so we have to group with all the columns that are not in the aggregate function. So we group with hacker ID and name. Okay, so now we have the hacker ID, we have the name, and we have the total number of challenges by each student. So Margaret has a hacker ID 57799 and she has made four challenges. She submitted four challenges to the contest. Now the first part is cleared. We have the order by still open but we are gonna include that in the end. We don't need that right now. Now it's about the second part. If more than one student with the same number of challenges and the count is less than the maximum number of challenges then we should exclude those students. So the first thing that we want to figure out is how do we actually see if a student has more has the same number of challenges. How do we see if Margaret with four challenges if somebody else also has four challenges. So let's order by count from challenge ID to make that a bit more obvious who has the same number of challenges. So I ordered descendingly that means the highest number of challenges are at the top and we want to definitely include the highest number that is, that is this condition. The count is less than the maximum number of challenges so the maximum number of challenges should be included. And now we can see for example so what should be excluded. So they all have unique, 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 unique. So they have 12 here. 12 comes very often here. So they all should be excluded. So now you have to think without no SQL, without programming, without anything. How do you know? How can you detect that these people with 12 they should be excluded? You think it's easy they have Steve has 12 I can see it here Sandra has 12 Ryan has 12 so what you're actually doing you are counting the number of challenges so you have uh, 14 you know that they are ordered so if in the front is no 14 and afterwards is no 14 then 14 is the only one then this is included so you count the number right you count here with the 12 you have one time two times ah okay we already have two times so that can be has to be excluded anything more than uh, one time that comes out in this query has to be excluded. What do we want to do with our query? We want to count the number of challenges. So we have to make another count on this count. We already counted the total number of challenges for each hacker and now we have to count how often each challenge actually each, uh, each number of challenges actually comes in the query. In order to count this now programmatically this 12 12 12 12 12 we actually have to count the column that we got out in the first query. So we are going to put this query as a common table expression with a with statement and that just means that we are creating another table on the fly. We call it table tbl num challenges s and then we open the brackets and now we can make another select down there. So now when we do another select we can refer to this tbl num challenges. It, will, it is another table now. It is the hackers table and the challenges table. We now created another table and we make select num challenges which is the column that we just created here and now we want to count the num challenges. How often does the 15 exist? How often does the 14 exist? How often does the 12 exist in the table? From t 
TBL num challenges. So let's, what do we expect here? So we have to group by, of course, group by the num challenges. That is actually the thing that we want to group, the thing that we want to count now. Okay, so we cannot use the order by in uh, such a table because it is not our results table. It is just a um, co contemporary table. Okay, so now we see the number of challenges. Uh, they are one time submitted. There are 126 hackers that submitted one challenge. So one challenge, definitely all of them get excluded. Two challenges, they had, there were 128 hackers that all submitted each two challenges. So all of these hackers, they also get excluded. So everybody gets here excluded until the one that submitted eight, challenge, eight challenges. So this is the first hacker that actually gets included in the result set because nobody else submitted eight challenges. Only he or she did that. So this is a very important information. The count, let's call it as count challenges. And let's use this table again. So what we did here with the with TBL num challenges that we created a co contemporary table, a common table expression it is called. We can do this again. We can do that as often as we want. And now we do it a second time. And how do we do that? We make a comma and we write TBL count challenges as so now we have it the second time to know how many, the number of challenges, how often do they actually were submitted. And now we want to get a result set where we get everything out. So we want the hacker ID, we want the name, we want the num challenges from the first table that we created, and we want the count challenges from the second table that we created. We take it from tbl num challenges, tbl num challenges, tnc, on tnc dot so how can we combine these tables the first and the second one well they have one same column the num challenges and we can also join them on the num challenges so num challenges equals first we get from tbl num challenges and then afterwards of course in the next line we make the join so tbl num challenges is tnc abbreviation join tbl count challenges tcc on tcc dot num challenges equals tnc dot num challenges. So where comes the hacker ID from? We take this from tnc. We also take this from tnc. We take this from tnc from the first table and this is from the second table then which we call tcc. So let's get this output now. So now we are already pretty close to the solution and we can even see better here what we did. In the first column there is the hacker ID as we write here. The second column is the hacker name, Caroline. The third column is one. What it means, she submitted one challenge. And the last column is how many hackers in total submitted one challenge. And they were, the answer is 126 hackers submitted one challenge. So of course, Carolyn cannot be seen in the end result set because 125 other hackers also submitted that. And this is also not the maximum number of challenges because there were hackers that submitted 50 times and that is the maximum number of challenges. So now that we joined everything together and we made our tables, we still have to apply this exclusion from these records. So how do we do this? Well, because we designed it in this way, it's really easy now. We can write where in the fourth columns, actually fourth columns says to us uh, who should we include and who should we exclude. So we should exclude the ones that they have more than one in this uh, last column, the count challenges. So we write where tcc.count challenges is bigger than one. But there was another condition that we cannot forget about and that is if the count is less than the maximum number of challenges then we should exclude them. But if the count is the maximum number of challenges which is 50 in this case then we should include them even if they come multiple times. So how do we write this now? And that's why we write an or here because then if any of these conditions is met so actually we have to write smaller or equal because we want to include them. Yes, so we write smaller or equal to one. And who want to, else do we want to include? If the tcc.count challenge equals the maximum count. So if the count challenges uh, column equals, no, if the number of challenges column 
if the tnc.num challenges, how many number of challenges did they submit it? If that equals the maximum number of challenges, then we also want to include them. So if that equals, and here we can make another query where we select the maximum number of challenges. So where do we get this out? Actually from the first table here, we can see we counted here the number of challenges. So select max from num challenges from the first table, from table num challenges. This will be the number 50 that comes out from this query. And then we include everyone that has uh, the number of challenges equal to 50. And this is exactly what we want because 50 is the maximum number of challenges and we don't want to exclude them, we want to include them. So now we have all of these conditions and now the last condition that we need is the order by. There we had two, two things that we wanted to order by, the total number of challenges descending, which is tnc.num challenges descending and after the hacker ID. And it didn't set descending, so we can assume that it means ascending, which is the default option. So let's run this code now. Okay, so it still, still says wrong answer. Why does it says wrong answer? Well, we still have this tcc.count challenges in the result set. And we don't actually need this one because we only had to give out three columns. Hacker ID name total number of challenges by each student. So let's run this ex again and I expect the right solution now. And there you go. So we have solved the problem. I'm going to put the link for the query in the description. Please subscribe and like the video and tell me in the comments what other video do you want to watch next. And see you in the next one. Welcome to today's video. So today we are going to solve another medium challenge. Let's take this one contest leaderboard. Contest leaderboard, you did such a great job helping Julia with her last coding challenge that she wants you to work on this one too. The total score of a hacker is the sum of their maximum scores for all of the challenges. Write a query to print the hacker ID, name and total score of the hackers ordered by the descending score. If more than one hacker achieved the same total score, then sort the results by ascending hacker ID. Exclude all hackers with a total score of zero from your result. Okay, now let's take this text and translate it into our own notes. Output, what do we want? Where does it write here? The total score of a hacker is the sum of the maximum scores for all of the challenges. Write a query to print the hacker ID Output is a hacker ID, name, and total score of the hackers ordered by the descending score. Okay, total score of hackers, total score definition. How is the total score defined? The sco total score of a hacker is the sum of their maximum scores for all of the challenges. Sum of maximum scores for all challenges. Okay, condition. What do we have for conditions? So we have to write a query to print the hacker ID name and total score. We have that here. Output hacker ID name total score ordered by the descending score. Okay, condition is order by score or total score descending. If more than one hacker achieved the same total score, then sort the result by ascending, ascending hacker ID. Okay, second order by is what ascending hacker ID? Hacker ID ascending. Exclude all hackers with the total score of zero from your result. So another condition. All 
exclude all hackers with total score equals zero. Okay, input format, we have two tables, hackers, the hacker ID of the, is the ID of the hacker and name is the name of the hacker. And submissions table. In submissions, we have the submission ID, the hacker ID, the challenge ID, and the score. You can already see the hacker ID we have in the submissions table, the same as the hacker ID in the hackers table. So we can combine the table or join the table over the hacker ID. Here we have a sample output for 071 rows 191. Hacker 4071 submitted solutions for challenges 1979 and 49593. So the total score equals 95 plus max from 4396 equals 199, 91. Okay, so the hacker 4071. Hacker ID 4071. We have it here. Submitted 41979 and 49593. 4071 is here, here, and here. 49593 and 19797. And 49593, the hacker submitted two times. One time with a 43 and one time with a 96. So we just count one challenge because the challenges were submitted two times and we count the maximum from 43 and 96 which is 96. Okay so let's make our first try. Select what do we want? The hacker ID, we put it in output, we wanted the name, and we wanted the total score. We don't know right now how to calculate total score. So we just write in string total score. From, I believe the hacker, the tables was called hackers. Let's run it. Okay, great, this was working. So we have the hacker ID, we have the name, and we have here written total score. So let's see how many rows do we have. 200 rows in total. So we have 200 different hacker IDs. Let's take this code or the output. Code one. Because we can use it later. So now the question is how to get the total score. Because we have the hacker ID and the name, we just need the total score. We probably have to calculate it. So we want, it says here, maximum from 43 and 96. So we want the maximum from each challenge. So let's select maximum from score because here's the score in the submissions table score and from what from each challenge so we have to group it by the challenge challenge id is here okay so let's take the challenge id and the table is from submissions submissions Let's run this one. Okay, we got a mistake. It is not contained in an, either an aggregate function or the group by clause. Yes, we every time we use the aggregate, maximum score, for example, it can also be minimum, average, whatever aggregate you use, you need a group by clause. And we group it by the challenge ID because we want the maximum for each challenge. Let's run this one again. Okay, so we got something out. 
and we have the maximum score for each challenge. So now what do we got out here? We have the challenge ID and now we have the score that the highest hacker that the hacker achieved with the highest score on this challenge. But this is not really what we want because we want not just the highest score from each challenge, we want for every hacker the highest score for their challenges. So for example, here in this example, hacker 4071 has two times the challenge 49593 and we want the highest score of this challenge. So we want to group it not only by the challenge ID, so we get the maximum score from the whole, from every hacker from for this challenge, but we want to also group it by the hacker ID. So we get it for each challenge and for each hacker, the maximum score. We also put it in a group by here, hacker ID. Let's run this one again. Okay, great. Now we have the maximum score. We have a challenge ID and we have the hacker ID. So we have now the, for example, the challenge 20594 and the hacker ID 486. So 486 has succeeded in the challenge 20594, the score, the maximum score 45. Maybe he had other submissions too in this challenge, but this is his maximum score that he achieved in this challenge. So this is an important query that we also need. And now what we can do is combine the first select statement that we made with the second one. How do we do it? With a with statement. So we use the first one in, when we do with max score as, so we call the table now that we create max score. Don't need the semicolon now. So now we have this select statement that we can use later in another select statement. And the uh, table is called max score because we need the maximum score later. And now we make the, our second select statement. Select, now we want the real output, the hacker ID, we want the name, and we want the total score. Now we have the max score for every challenge. And now what is the definition of the total score? The definition is sum of maximum scores for all challenges. Okay, great. So we just make to have to make the sum from maximum score here. So the maximum score, we give it a name here in the table that is before and we call it SM score. Now we can take the sum from this maximum score. We call it sum from M score because we called it M score in the table before, we also have to call it now sum from M score. So from where do we want to get this? First from the hackers table. And now we have to join the other table. What join do we want to use? We are using the inner join. Because we, what are we going to lose? We are going to lose hackers they don't have any submissions, they don't have any challenges in the second table. As an inner join, we exclude all hackers that they, that they are not ex included in the submissions table, but we don't want them anyway, because we only want hackers that have a total score above zero. So we make an inner join on submissions table. No, not on the submissions table, but on the table that we already did before and we called it max score. So let's take this table max score, ms on ms, on which can we join the common column from both of them is the hacker ID. So we are joining on the hacker ID equals h dot hacker ID. So now we take the hacker ID. We also have to call it 
age.hackerid because we take it from the hackers table. The name we also take from the hackers table. And the sum from M score we take from the max score table that we created before. So let's see if this runs. Okay, we got a mistake again. It is not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause. Of course, we need to make a group by clause because we make an aggregate again. Group by, what do we have to group by? All the all columns that are not in the aggregate in the sum function. So that is the hacker ID, h.hacker ID and h.name. So let's run this one again. Okay, so now we have an output. We have the hacker ID, we have the name of the hacker, and we have the sum of all their maximum scores and all the challenges. So we already did most of the work now. Now we have to look a little bit more on the conditions. So the condition was order by total score descending. Order by is always the last command in SQL. So we make order by total score. What is the total score? Sum from MS score. So let's take this, sum from MS score. And it should be descending. Let's run this one. Okay, so we have the total score, 760 up, and then it goes down, 710, and so on. And goes down until, okay, we have a couple ones with zero. We only have 194 here. Apparently, a couple of them already are excluded because in total we had 200 challenge hackers and we already excluded six of them. And also, we have to exclude the ones that they have zero as the total score because that was another condition. Exclude all hackers with total score equals zero. So, how do we do this? We cannot use a where clause. Because if we make where sum from ms score, ms dot m score above zero is not possible because he first has to aggregate in the select clause and then you cannot use the aggregate here in the where clause. You can use in the where clause the hacker ID. You can make where hacker ID is like 9999, no, 99999, for example, but you cannot use aggregate here. So let's take this one away. What do we have to use? We actually have to use having clause here. Having is after you have it aggregated and then you can use it again. So we make having sum from ms.m score to be above zero. Let's run this again. Okay, we still don't have the right answer. So we are already missing, still missing some condition. Order by total score descending, we have that. Second order by hacker ID ascending. Okay, the second order is, we are still missing this one. So order by the first order we did and the second order we just have to make a column and then hacker ID is scanning and that is the second order and now i think we have all our conditions and now we should get the right solutions let's see and there it is we got the right solution so please share if you like uh, if you like it comment down below and like and subscribe my channel so i can keep making these videos for you guys thank you hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial today we are going to talk about the medium problem sql project planning you are given a table project so we have just one table containing three columns one table three columns test id start date and end date it is guaranteed that the difference between the end date and the start date is equal to one day for each row of the table. So always the start date 
row and has one day difference to the end date, 1st of October, 2nd of October, 2nd of October, 3rd of October, and so on. Okay, if the end date of the tests are consecutive, then they are part of the same project. So if this end date is also the same as the start date in the next line, then they are part of the same project. Okay, Samantha is interested in finding the total number of different projects completed. Okay, so we have a lot of rows here and we have to kind of figure out which ones are projects that they are together and which ones are just days between the projects. Write a, write a query to output the start and end dates of projects listed by the number of days it took to complete the project in ascending order. If there is more than one project that have the same number of completion days, then order by the start date of the project. Okay, so let's take the notebook out and write our goals here. Goal is write a query to output the start date and end dates of project. Output start date and end date of projects. So this is really important, okay. And the next one is a condition, order by number of completion days. And the second order should be start date of project. Okay, so from, from this list that we have here, which are not just project start and end dates, but also like days between the projects, we have to get the project start and end dates. So let's look first to get an overview on this list from the table projects. Select star from projects. See what we get here. Okay, so now we get task ID, so we can identify it is unique. Is it unique? Yes. We have 24 task IDs. They are not ordered, but they are unique for every row. We have in total 24 rows. And we have the start date ordered. So first is 1st of October, and then it goes on throughout 2015 until 17 of November 2015. And the start date is always in an ordered way. So now the big question is how can we get from this 24 lines that we get as a result if we just run the table, how can we get the project start date and the end date of the project without getting the lines in between. So for example, in the first day, what would that mean? So we have 1st of October to 2nd of October, and then it starts with the same day. That means it's part of one project in the next line, 2nd of October to 3rd of October. Then the next line again starts with the same day, 3rd of October to 4th of October, and again with the same day, 4th of October to 5th of October. Then the next line in line five, we have 11th of October. So there's another project. It is not the same end date as in the next row, the start date. So we have one project from one to four. And we would like to get out now the first, the start date, 1st of October from this project and line four, the end date, 5th of October of 2015. So how can we get just, just these values and then how can we get them in one line? So that really what we want in the output. In the output, we want the start date and end date of the projects. So maybe we look a bit at the sample of days because here also we can see the start date is ordered as it is also in our table. It is ordered by start date. So let's look a bit closer to this one. So now we can see here 
that we have the start date in the 1st of October. So let's mark this one, the start date of this first project. Then we have 2nd of October, 3rd of October, and then comes 13th of October. That means here is the gap is the second project starting. Okay, 13th of October, 14th of October, same project. Then 28th of October comes the next project. And then comes the fourth project, 30th of October. And where's the end? So let's take another color to make the end. So we start in the 1st of October, and then we have the end in 4th of October. Here we have the end, okay. And then we have the end in the 15th of October from the second project. And the third project is 29th of October. And the last project is 31 of October. So now the question is, how can we single them out, the project start date and the project end date? How can we single these two out so that they are just standing in one line? Then we have to think about what is different from the project start and the project end to all the other lines. Let's see, the 1st of October. Do we have that anywhere here in our start date row, in our start date column? No, we don't. Do we have it here in our end date column? No, we don't have that either here in our end date column. So the next day from this project, 2nd of October, we can see we have it in the end date column. It's here in the first row, 2nd of October. So the next row is 3rd of October. We also have this in the end date row, in the end date column. It is the 3rd of October. And then the next one is again a project start. Do we have this project start in the end date column? We don't have this project start 13th of October, also not in the end date column. So we can see that whenever there's a project start, you will not see this date anywhere else in the end date column. So difference to from project from project start date compared to other start dates. What is the difference? It is not in the list of end dates. And now we can see something similar, very similar to the end date. Now we have the 2nd of October here as an end date and we can see it. It ends here, but it starts in the next line with the same day because it's a consecutive project. And only in the end, at the 4th of October, we don't see this end date in the start date column. So we can see difference from project end date compared to other end dates. What is the difference? It is not in the list of start dates. So that is really the difference from these patterns is that the project start date and the project end dates, they are not in the other one column. So the start date not in the end date column and the end date not in the start date column, if it's the beginning or the end. That is very important to remember. And with that knowledge, we can make, we can build a query that we can put out the start project start date and the project end date. So let's do that now. So we want to select the project start date. So set, let's select the start date then because we, that's what we need. From projects where, so the start date should not be Sorry. The start date should not be in the list of end dates. Okay, so the start date is not in, and how do we get the list of end dates now? Now we have to make another query to get the list of end dates. So how would you normally, if you don't, wouldn't have this one already written, how would you make a query to get the list of end dates? You would write select select end date from project, right? That's how you get the list of end dates. So this is basically what we also have to do, but we have to put this one inside the other query so that we can compare the start date with all the list 
of the end dates and it should not be in there. So let's make this query now. So now we can see we have 11 lines output. So that means we have 11 projects. So if we wouldn't make this one, it's where the video, if we could just get the end, if we would just get the start, date, then we have here a list of 24 rows as we also had in the beginning. So with that filtering, we get coordinate to 11 rows and these rows are exactly the project days the project start date. So we can see here 1st of October a project starts and then 11th of October a project starts again. So let's run this code. So we have 1st of October and 11th of October so in, in the next day. And because we have it ordered by start date, we can also match it later with the project end date. So that is important that this list is already ordered by the start date. So now we have one query for the start date. And now we do something very similar for the end date. So let's put this back to the side and to our notes. Project start date. We get it like this. Now we will get the, want to get the end, end date, right? So we make it again, select, and now we select the end date from projects where end date, so end date should not be in the list of start dates as we figured out in the beginning in our table. Not in select start date. We have to select now because the end dates should not be in the start date. That means and they are project end dates. So let's run this code and we should expect 11 lines again instead of 24 as is, is, is in the full table. And we get 11 lines. Okay, so these are the project end dates. Great, so now we have this code. Put this also to the side. Project end date. Okay, so now we have to kind of bring it back together. And there we can use the with statement again, which allows us make multiple tables and to ask to query the tables together. So we make with project start date. Now we create a temporary table with project start date as and in this temporary table we want to get the project start date. And we also named it project start date. So now we have the project start date in here. And now we want to get another temporary table and we call it project end date as and now we call that the temporary table project end date and we make the select statement for the project end date. And now what we kind of want to mix them together now, right? So we make select Star from project start date. And now I'm just going to write a comma, which you have to be very careful if you do that. Project end date. So, how many lines do you think we can expect now? Let's run this code. So what we did actually here is we made a Cartesian product of the project start date and the project end date. And the Cartesian product matches every line that is in the first table. So we have these two tables that we just put here in the temporary table file. We have this uh, that matches every line from the first table with the next table. So we have 11 lines here and 11 lines here. And then in the, in the result, we get 11 times 11. That means 121 rows we should expect here. And we get, yes, 121 rows. 
This, of course, is not correct. We don't want to have so many. We just have 11 project start dates and 11 project end dates. So we don't want to get the full Cartesian product. We want to filter it somehow so that the, just the project start and the project end stands together in one row. They also stand somewhere here together, but they also mixed up all the other combination as well. So how can we do that? Well, since we know that they are ordered, I mean, we saw before and we also see here in this table that they are ordered by the start date and also the end date. We just have to get the line right. So as it says here, task ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we just have to get the right line and then we match it by the line that it says here in the table. But unfortunately, we don't have the task ID ordered in the list. As you can see in the beginning, the task ID was not ordered as it is in the example. So we have to make our own ID and then we match over this ID that we create in this table later. So for this, I'm going to use the rank function. And I already Googled it here. So the rank function, because I always forget really how it works. We have here rank over and then we can use a partition by, but we don't really need partition by. We just have to order by the rank function. Order by start date in the start date and end date here in the end date. So how, how does it really look? We make a rank then we write over and then we have to write order by start date as how do we call it rank start so for the project start date and now for the end date we have to do the same rank over order by end date as rank end. So how does it really look like? So I'm going to put this code one more time in the temporary file. And I'm going to run one of these codes to, to show you guys how the rank function really looks. So we have the rank end, we rank it over and order by end date, which anyway it is ordered by end date, so it should get, should get the right number. So now we have one, two, three, until 11, perfectly ordered, exactly how we wanted it, because if we, we would just have used the task ID, I mean, I can show you guys, as you could see in the beginning, in the task ID, we didn't have it ordered, right? So it was very mixed up. So we had to make our own rank. So this one worked perfectly. Then I take it away and now we can use our code that I just had again. So where does it start here? Okay, so I copy it again. And now let's run the code again. Sorry, that was a bit too much. So now we have the code again. And what do we have now? So now we have the ranks here. But we still have this Cartesian product, which is way too many lines. So what do we actually want? We want the we want don't want the ranks in the end in the output. We want just want the start date in the output. Then we want the end date from project start date, project end date, where and now we write rank start as we just made the rank equals rank end. So now we are very close to the solution already. Let's see if this works. Okay, great. So now we can see the project start and the project end perfectly together in one line. And we also just have 11 lines, exactly how we wanted it. So now what we still need is the order by. So we have two things by which we order, number of completion dates and start date of projects. 
So let's do this. In order by number of completion days, how can we how can we get the number of completion days? For that we can use the date diff function. And the date diff function basically calculates the difference between one date and the other date. So let's make this one. Order by, I write it in a new line, date diff from day, because we want the difference of days. And now we want the start date. That's where we want the difference and the end date. We want to order it by the date difference. So let's run this code and see. Okay, so we have here one day difference just in this project. That's very good. And here also one day difference. And here on the bottom we have 25 October to 31 October, six days difference. So it looks like he made the number of completion days correctly. He ordered it. And now we need the second order, start the date of projects. So let's use the second order by now. The start date of project. So there we just have to use the start and date. And that will be the last option that we have to do. And it works. So thank you guys for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe and comment down below if you still have any question about this problems. Welcome to another time of real-time problem solving. You are given three tables, students, friends and packages. Students contains two columns, ID and name. Friends contains two columns, ID and friend, ID. Packages contains two columns, ID and salary. Why did query to output the names of those students whose best friends got offered a higher salary than them. Names must be ordered by the salary amount offered to the best friends. It is guaranteed that no two students got the got same salary offer. So let's make some notes. Let's look at the table. We have one table, students, ID, name, friends, ID, friend ID, and packages, ID, salary. Great, three tables, three tables. Students, friends, this. So we want an output, the names of those students whose best friends got offered a higher salary than them. Okay, so we have, want to have the name, name from students. We want the name from students whose best friends got offered a higher salary than them. Condition, best friends have higher salary. Condition one, best friends must have, have higher salary. Condition two, ordered by the salary amount Offered to the best friends. Uh -huh. So not their salary amounts. Best friends. It's guaranteed that no two students got the same uh, salary offer. That's good. We don't have to worry about that. So we have a sample here. Ashley, Samantha, you, Julia, Scarlett, students. Oh, there are not so big packages here. Huh? Samantha, Julia, Scarlett are the output because the friend, so it's a mentor, has a best friend, three. And the three has a higher than the two. Okay, let's start with an easy one and then we go from there. So let's select, oh, this is a bit annoying, let's put this one here and this one here. Okay, we don't need so much space here. So let's start with a very simple one. Select name from students. See what the, what names we have here. Okay, we have 20 names. What would also be interested, interesting is the name and the friend ID. It would also be interesting. Select name. 
and friend ID and students make an inner join students S. Let's make it a bit nice here. Inner join. What do we want to join? We want to join the friends. We are joined friends F on F point B guys. So there we can see the friends. You can see some mentor, the friend, and the friend ID. Now would be interesting what is the mentor's salary also. So mentor and her friend is 14. What's her salary? Let's take also her salary. In her join packages, I think was the name, huh? Packages. Let's be on e dot ID equals this dot ID. Now we got the salary from Samantha. Would be interesting to also get the friend salary. How could we get the friend salary here? Well, my idea is to make another query in front of this query to get the friend ID and the salary from the friend and then to join it at this table over the friend ID. So let's take this away and let's try this one. Friend ID salary, select friend ID salary from friends. And then we join inner join friends. No inner join packages P on p.id equals f.id. So now we have the friend ID and the salary from the friend. And now what we can do is put this query in front of the other one with friend salary. And we have this one. Then we select this ones here. And student is, and we join this friend in a join. So we have this friend ID and the salary here. Let's take this for controlling purposes. Take this one out, maybe in an Excel. And we have here friend and the salary. That does matter. Now we have this one. And let's try this one again. He doesn't like the semicolon here. Oh, inner join. Oh, yeah, I also have to write the inner join, of course. Inner join, friend, salary. On FS on fs dot id or actually it's friend idea yeah. yeah fs dot friend id equals s dot friend id level 16 he doesn't like the friend id he doesn't like the salary now and what does he doesn't like oh it's 97 Friend ID salary here yeah, at line 11. Line 11. Invalid column name friend ID. Oh, because it's not from the student's table, it's from the friend's table. From the friend's table here, this one should be also from the friend's table. Salary should come from the package table. So now let's see. 14 is a friend and 15.5 is the salary. That looks good. And now we want also, there was a package salary. Now we want also the friend salary. So we make fs dot salary. They both have 15.5, are you sure? 
let's see what the different is so the friend id is 14 so it should have 15.5 yes 15 has 15.6 yeah that's also true but they always have the same that's not right that they're both the friend salary but then we also want his salary though his or her salary so we have the name we have the f dot friend id and we have the p dot salary and join the friends on the students we join the packages on the students so if we get the salary from the packages we should get we should get our salary here let's take also the student id here so mentor one and the friend is 14 but why are the salaries the same we have the friends that we joined on here we joined the packages then we joined the friend salary how should we actually get the salary from the student the student salary you get by a join from students to packages students inner join packages on pid equals sid so let's start over select select name salary from students s in a join packages t on p dot id equals s dot id 15.5 okay that's good but then we didn't get the friend salary before how do we get the friend salary so this is her salary then how do we get the friend salary we have to join the friend id to the id oh that was a mistake huh we have to join the friend id to id and not id to id from the friends table yeah 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 that was i think the mistake Start with this one again so we had this query query where we selected the friend id and the salary from friends and we inner joined on packages p on p dot id which is correct but then we have to say f dot friend id that's the problem here and now we should get now we should get different salaries uh, that looks better oh yeah that looks better so we have let's make it a bit more in order we have the name the id then let's put the salary here from them and then we have the friend id the friend id salary so that's good that's good friend name friend id salary friend id and another salary so now what do we want again the condition is why the create to upload the names of those students whose best friends got offered a higher salary than them so the best friends have a higher salary than them so we have here the name we have the salary and we have the friend salary so we want to put the name of the salary is lower than the friend salary or the friend salary is higher than the salary doesn't matter and we can make an if statement or we can make a case statement what should we do i think because it's just one case we can also make an if statement if so what do we want to know we just said it if fs dot salary higher than my salary then this dot name is yes. 
So we write as give them images on the rest of I don't know. I think so, maybe. If the friend salary is higher than my salary or our salary, then we can name it name. Doesn't matter, we cannot see it anyway. So let's leave all the other columns so we can check if everything is right. No, everything is not right. Line 7 incorrect. Syntax near the closing brackets. Ah. Then as name, I think that this is syntax, isn't it? If f s dot salary is bigger than p dot salary, then s dot name 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 salary. What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? So we have the correct syntax here. Let's see what this is for a syntax. If it's good. So we have the expression true value, false value. And the false value, I think is optional. I think it's optional. Is that not true? Do we have to give a false value? What's your problem here? Well, maybe we have to give a false value because we have other columns. I don't know. Or we always have to give a false value. So, we always give a name. Oh, no, we don't always give a name here. Yeah, we have Julia Julia. We give the name of Julia because our friend is earning more. Yeah, that's good. For Brittany, we don't give anything. For Fidelmenta, we don't give anything. Christine, we give it because our friend is having 33 and she is having 18. So that looks pretty good. That looks pretty decent, I would say. So now we can block this one out. Write it like this. Run it. Oh, that looks doesn't look nice. We have brackets inside of there. We have spaces, a lot of spaces here. We don't like spaces. Can we not just live without this one? No, we didn't like that. So how can you make it? <laughs> No row fonts value. So the problem is I don't want to return anything on the false value. Can I just write like null? Is that okay? Like is that a thing? No, he just writes null. Maybe we should make a case statement. Because I don't know how to solve this one now. I can just make one case and then we end it. We can also do that. Might be easier than trying to figure this one out now. Case when if it's dot salary bigger than p dot salary and name. Otherwise, otherwise, and as dot name, and as name, and re whatever. So oh, let's see if you run this one. No, you still make a null here. Why? That's not cool, man. That's not cool at all. Let's 
So our output would be right. Our output would be in the right one if okay, let's just make another one. So it's getting a bit ugly here now. So we have the friend salary. Now we get the values. We have the solution not. Now we have another pr query before. I'm sure that's not the easiest solution. But we are trying to get the solution now. Solution with nulls. Yes, we have this one. Okay, and then we make select name from solution with nulls. Where it is not now. That's a name salary I have called it. Okay. Oops. Name salary. Oops. Here we got it. Invalid column name, name, line 18. When name is not now, of course, we have to make name salary here. Oh yeah, baby. Now we got it. And now we have only to order it, right? Must be ordered by the salary amount offered to the best friends. Uh huh. Chicky monkeys here. By the salary amount offered to the best friend. Oh, not by their own salary. That's not a problem for us. Can we order in this one in the pre case? I think we can. The pre query from students order by order by the salaries of the best friends. Order by what is the best friend salary? FS dot salary, right? Oh, that is the friend salary. FS dot salary. Uh, can, you cannot take it here. Okay, then we have to take different salary also here. Not a problem. Not a problem, man. FS dot salary. Just take also the friend salary here. Ordered by the salary in the other query. So let's take it from here. Order by friend salary, and we just name it salary here. Uh huh. So now we're talking, huh? Now we're talking, baby. So we got the solution. It's quite complicated and probably not the best one, but we got there in the end. So let's see what we did here. First, we got the friend salary. That's a good thing to get that. And we had the solution with nodes, and also we had to get the name salary so we can order by that. Even though we could also order by that directly in here if we wouldn't get the nodes here. So that's really why we had to make this other pre query because I don't know how to get this one without getting the nodes otherwise. Now in the last query, we can get it without the nodes. Ordered by salary, so how could we improve this code? That is also the question here. With friend salary, yes. So, stylistically, we could improve. We can put all in one line here. Trying to and it's a bit more aligned here, so that you have like the river lane here. Oh no, the river is not working here anymore. So let's make the river like this. Now we have a river here, so maybe that looks a bit better here. I don't know. And now, if we make this any easier, the solution. 
Now we have a lot of breeze queries. Maybe we could use having. Maybe we can use this, yeah. Could we make the friend center in one step with the year? Yeah, why not, huh? Select friend ID, salary from friends. You know, joint packages. Yeah, actually we could. We could just join the packages two times here. That's true, right? We just join the packages here again. And we just name it packages friends. That could be a solution. Yeah, I think that looks good. In the drawing packages P on P dot ID equals F dot friend ID. We name it packages friend PF. It sounds good. Packages friend pf on pf.id equals pf.friendid. So we don't need the fs stuff there. Then we can delete this one. Then we have case when pf packages friends. f.salary is being a p salary, then as name. And as name salary. Here we need the PF salary. Now we can use all of this once. And now we think we got the code a little bit easier. Oops. Invalid object name packages friend. Maybe we should have saved the solution before. Inner join packages. Packages friend. Uh, okay, of course we cannot join packages friend because there is no table with packages friend. What am I doing here? Am I going crazy here or what? Packages. We name it packages pf on pf.id equals f.friendid. Uh, but we don't have even the friend here. Ah, oh, don't we have the friends already joined here? Yeah, so this should work now, I think. Right, maybe. Yeah, it's also working. So now we are doing symmetric pairs. You are given a table which is called functions containing two columns, X and Y. So here's the table and here are the columns X and Y, which are both integer columns. Two pairs, X1, Y1 and X2, Y2 are said to be symmetric pairs if x1 equals y2 and x2 equals y1. Write a query to output all such symmetric pairs in ascending order by the value of x. List the rows such that x1 smaller or equal to y1. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, quite a mathematical challenge here. So let's put the output. Output we want symmetric pairs and there are two conditions on these symmetric pairs the first condition is x1 equals y2 second condition is x2 equals y1 and there are some other conditions so order by x is the condition and the other one is x1 smaller or equal y1 okay so let's try to get a bit more grasp on the conditions and the symmetric pairs what we really have to do so we have a sample input here and i'm gonna cut this one out to explain it and raise the understanding of it let's color grade it here so we have one x value here which is 20 and for this 20 we have to find so the first condition is x1 equals y2 so what is x1 this is just x well x1 can be any row here in the x column so this one this one this one doesn't really matter so anything can be x1 
and now we want to find a pair to it. So the first condition is x1 equals y2. So if this is x1, then on the other side, except in this row, has to be also a 20. So for example, this case and this case. Now we are going to choose this case here, and I'm going to soon explain you why. So this is the first condition is met. So x1, like I said, is x1 can be like anywhere here. This is just um, it's just one to um, differentiate it from x2. That's why they call it x1. So for example, it is here 20. And now we have y2. And this is somebody, some other column, some other row than in x1. So it cannot be this one. That would be y1. And this can be y2. This can also be y2. This can also be y2. So y2 can be any other row except the row that x1 is. So this first condition x1 equals y2 and now we have x2 equals y1. Okay, so x2 has to be, so now let's choose a different color here. So this is going to be the x2 and it has to be the same row as the y2. So we already said y2 is here and now this is going to be x2 and this is should be equal to y1 and this is the case. So that's why we have a symmetric pair here. Now we can also write write it down here so this is x1 this is x2 this is y1 and this is y2 might be a little bit thick here but you understand what i mean okay so now we found a symmetric pair and now we should order it where x1 smaller or equal to y1 so they are the same so it doesn't matter so you're right in the output 2020, which you can here see here on the bottom left, 2020. So now let's find the next symmetric pair. Let's take another color and let's take this one as x1. Like I said, anybody can be x1 really. So we have here x1. Now we have to find uh, the 20 again on another row that is not the row from x1. So that would be this row. So they are the same x1 equals y2 and now this is y2 so let me just write that again with a bit of a smaller font so this is now in this case this is x1 you have to forget a little bit about the first example and the other one is uh, y2 y2 so if this is y2 then what is y1 if you uh, if you think about about it and what is x2 so because of this is y2 and this is that row, then x2 is in the same row. So x2 will be here. And because this is x1, y1 would be also in the same row. So this is y1. So that is the next condition that x2, which is here, x2 equals to y2, which is here. So they are both 21 and this is both 20. So this is another symmetric pair. So if you understand this, how this works together, then at least you get in theory, what are we looking for exactly? So this is the most important concept to understand for this task. So we looked a bit at the theoretical concept. Now, if you would be like just looking for the pairs without programming anything, how would you look for it? So what I would do is I would just take any row, like start with the first row, the 20, and then I would look for a 20 in the y and i will try to find the first condition met the y2 so in any other row except this first row i would look for another 20 so i can see it here there's another 20 and then i met one condition and then i would have to look okay here is the other 20 in this row so what about um, the other number here x2 20 is this symmetrical to the one in y1 and is it the same and if it's also the same, then I know I have a symmetric pair. Now we have a problem because, well, let's first make one query just to get a bit more of a grips of this problem. Select dar from, how's the table called? I think functions, right? Functions from this. Okay, so we have all kinds of pairs here. So now for another example, if we want to look for a symmetric pair and I have here the 86, I would look for the 86 in the Y column anywhere else except in the same row. So I would look all of this through and try to find the 86. Doesn't look like it has really 86. Okay, so it looks like this is not a symmetric pair. 
So let's try to first get the first condition. So x1 equals y2. So let's put everybody out that doesn't has x1 equals y2. So the problem here is we can we don't have a function where we can just compare um, one row here from um, from the x column with all the other other rows from the y column. So we don't have this choice that we can do here. We have to do a trick so that we can still compare them. And the trick is to compare the table with itself. So we have a functions table with X and Y column and you can try to make or you can make a join with the table itself. And then we can join, for example, this number 86 on its same table in the Y column with another 86. So because they have to be the same value. But for that, we first have to exclude the same row. So we cannot join 86 with the Y column 86 because they it, it is in the same row and this is not the condition. We really need another row. We could, for example, let's write this out, X and Y. This is the same as star. And to explain it a bit better, join. So this is functions F. So we can join functions f2 on f2 on f dot x so we have x1 equals f2 dot y so x1 equals y2 so let's run this code and then we are going to bump into a problem which i'm going to show you <laughs> okay so actually we have ambiguous ambiguous column name x and y so that means why he's saying that is because we have x and y in both functions in the join functions and in the normal table function so we have to say we take it from the original ta functions table with the f and not from f2 so sql knows where to get these columns from okay so we have a little bit less rows than before probably but we still have this 86 86 here even though we don't have any 86 anymore in another row than uh, this y row and we want to look exactly in all the other rows for the same value and not in not in the first row so in all rows except the first row so we have to have a way kind of to identify rows and we can do that by using the row number function so what do I mean by that? Let's let's go back to the start again and let's take x and y from the functions table and now let's make a row number function here. Okay, so we have x, y now and now we want row number. So row number is to enumerate rows. So you can have one, two, three and so on. You write row number over and then you write how do you want to order it and i'm going to say order it by x and y because in the end it should be ordered by x that was a condition from us so this is how i'm going to enumerate these columns also and i so can also write here order by x and y so that it will get in the result set more clear and then we can also partition it but we don't have to partition it with anything so let's see if I did this row number correctly. Probably I messed it up, the syntax. No, it seems to work. We have all the 117 rows and we don't have any double row numbers, so that's good. So we really have the first row with one, second row with two and so on. So that's great. So now what do we gain with this step? So we have now a row number behind x, y value. We have now a number for every row and we are gonna need that later. Now I'm going to use this as a temporary table with enumerate. I'm going to call it enumerate because I enumerate the rows in this step and I'm going to close it here and now I'm going to use that for the solution. So now I'm going to select the x and the y value from enumerate e join and now what do I have to join? I have to join again the enumerate table because I want to compare the table with the same values from the table. So I'm going to say enumerate E2 on E dot. 
So let's do the first condition here. So I'm going to write here. First condition x1 equals y2. So x1 in this case will be e dot x equals e2 dot y. And now why did we enumerate it? Because we can say and this is a very important condition rn which is our row number from the first table the row number should not be equal to the row number from the second table so that we don't get this 86 86 which has no match with the all the other rows let's run this again okay so we have an order by clause in our temporary table which is not really working but we can put the order by in the end in the result set so we want to order it again by x value and then by y value okay we again we have the problem ambiguous column name we already know what to do here we have to define from where do we take this columns we take it from the first enumerate table okay so we got rid of a lot of columns uh, of a lot of rows and also the 86 86 number is gone because it doesn't have any y2 value that it is matching so that's great we restricted it so now we also need the second condition to match so the second condition is the x2 has to be equal to y1 okay so the x2 was is basically from the other column uh, from the other row in x column to find it and that will be now the second condition second condition x2 equals y1 so then we are going to join again and we are going to join again the the second table enumerate now actually we don't join again we have to put it in the same condition because we want to we want to compare the same rows second condition is x2 equals y1 let's take this away we actually just need one join so enumerate e2 on e dot x equals e2 dot y and so let's make it like this to make it a bit more clear let's write this here second condition and x2 which will be e2 dot x equals y1 e dot y now we have the first condition and the second condition so we are we are very close to our result okay that's great let's um, check if it's really correct what we did so we have a two here in the x column so do we have another two here yes we have another two down here so this is matching and the 24 from x is also matching the 24 from the y column from the first so this is really a symmetric pair so we have still other conditions the problem is that we have 224 and 24 2 in the same in the table and we only want values when x1 is smaller or equal to y1 so let's put this in the where clause where e dot x is smaller or equal to e dot y now we should cut the result set in half okay looks much better now 224 422 so this is all correct except the last one here we have a symmetric pair which are exactly the same numbers so this is why both of the rows are staying in the table now to and we only want one pair one part of the pair so 13 13 we only want to show as in the sample we also have 20 20. so to get this one out we can just make distinct because it's the same row and that's how we should get the last not wanted row out and now we have the solution all right so now we are at the problem print prime numbers and this is a bit of a different problem because we don't have any table in here so let's first start to read the text write a query to print all prime numbers less than or equal to 1000 print your result on a single line and use the ampersand character as your separator instead of a space for example the output for all prime numbers smaller or equal to 10 would be 
2 and 3 and 5 and 7. So sounds pretty simple, but to solve it, we have to think about it. At first, of course, we have to think what are prime numbers. So we have to revisit that. Prime numbers definition, I would say, is only possible to divide by 1 and by itself. So therefore, ah, in the exception, exception 1 is not a prime number. So as we can see here, 1 is not a prime number. So the 2 is a prime number because you can only divide by 1 and by itself. 3 also, 4 you can divide by 2, so that will not qualify and so on. So we have to kind of figure out how to make this definition into an SQL code. Only possible to divide by 1 and by itself. And first we have to figure out something else because we don't have any table here given like in the other tasks. So what I would do first is I would create a table. You can do that with the create table command. And now I have to check how exactly I would write this syntax. Create table and this is SQL. So how would you write this syntax? Okay, that's a lot of code. All right, so I think we can just um, write how we want to call the table. Okay, so this looks uh, simple enough. So we create the table, we don't need to call the database or schema, but we have to write the table name. Okay, so let's call this table name prime numbers. And what do we have? So we open up the brackets and we say what column and what data type it is. And if it's a primary key, but we don't really have to define that. So how do we want to call the column? We call the column number and we make it of data type integer. I think that's it. So we just need one column and that is number. And there we write all the numbers between that are less than or equal than 1000, all the prime numbers. So let's run this code if this create table command is correct. After the words, we put this uh, semicolon. So as to finish this command. So no response. That's fine because we didn't give any output. We just created this table and you will not see any result from that. But it didn't, gi didn't give us any mistake, any error. So the create table seems to be working. So next step from create table is we can insert something into the table. So now we have an empty data table called prime numbers with one column that is called number and is an integer column. So now we insert into this table. In what do we want to insert? Uh, in the number column and the values should be, let's write one, two, three, just for testing purposes. Okay, so the syntax is not correct. course we have to give the table name insert into prime numbers the column number and the values okay we can only insert one value at a time so let's just put one in here okay so I think it was working we can check that by selecting everything from the table prime number so what I'm expecting is now to get the just the value 1 out of here because we inserted the value 1 into the table and we got it so here we have the output 1 okay so we don't want to have 1 in the table we actually want to have all the prime numbers less than or equal to 1000 so for that we definitely gonna need variables that we can then iterate over to really figure out these prime numbers. So to use the variables, we first have to declare them, like bringing them into existence into this world. So we declare, let's say, um, numbers variable, we call it nr for number, 
and we declare it as integer. And then we make a select nr equals one. So we write uh, this variable should be one. And then we say insert into the table and the value is not one, so, but we are using the value nr variable. So this should also come out to one because now we are using the variable instead of the explicit one that we are inserting into the prime numbers table. Let's see if this works like that. And it works the same. So this works also. Now we implicitly inserted the one and the advantage is now we have uh, the one as an add an R variable and we can change this variable as we want. We started with one as the variable and we say here while n are smaller or equal to 1000 and, or no, we don't need end. We just write it like that. And then, so now we are making a while loop. So we want to iterate over this variable that starts at one and we want to go until 1000. And to iterate over it, we need a while function. So that's why I wrote here while at nr smaller or equal to 1000 begin and then I can do something and then I end the while loop again. And in the end of the while loop, I want to iterate one more. So it's the while loop is not infinite and I want to put one higher number on the variable. So I write select at nr equals at nr plus one. So this is, that's how it can loop. So while it is smaller or equal to 1000, I'm gonna do this and I, here I put some code and then in the end I put a higher number. So we start with one and then it goes through the code and then it changes to two, then it goes through the code and then it changes to three and so on until it's at 1000. And if it's higher than 1000, it's gonna stop with the loop because that is our condition. So this code should actually, what should we put in here as a code? So we actually have to kind of have a way that we can detect for a prime number. We check for this prime number. And then if it is a prime number, then we want to insert it into the table prime numbers. If it's not a prime number, we don't want to insert it. So how can we check for it? Now, first let's make a check run from this to see if the syntax is correct. Yeah, looks correct. And now we have 1001 in the end because this goes until 1000 and then it gives one more and then we have 1001 and then this is actually what gets inserted into at nr. So everything was working. So now we have to figure out what do we want to check for a prime number. So we say if Ah, so now we need another variable actually. We need the divider because we have to divide this number nr with some with another variable. So I'm gonna call this divider. Select divider. No, not select. First I have to declare it, of course. So first we have to declare another variable. Declare a divider is also an int variable. And I can call select divider equals at nr minus one. So what do I want to do with this divider variable? Well, I want to figure out this prime number definition. So it's only possible to divide by one and by itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this nr number and I'm gonna iterate over it. And I'm gonna check, for example, if the number is five, I'm gonna check, is it dividable by four? Is it, uh, can you divide it by three? Can you divide it by one? If it's only divided by one and by the number itself, which is five, which is always the case, like an integer is always divided by itself. We don't even have to check that. Then it is a prime number. So this is exactly what I want to test here. And for that, I have to actually make another while, another loop, because I have to also go through the divider for every variable. So while the divider is bigger than one, because one, uh, it is anyway uh, dividable by one, every number. So while the begin divider is bigger than one, I'm gonna begin with something and I'm gonna end with something. And now we are going to make the test. If 
add nr percent divider. Now what does this percent mean? I'm going to explain to you very shortly. If add nr percent divider equals zero, then we want to do something. Okay, so now we made a condition at nr percent divider equals zero. Now what does that mean? So this percent sign means the rest of the division should be zero. So for example, if we have the nr, let's say nr is five, and then we have the divider and it's going to be iterate over div divider. At first it's going to be four. So we make five percent four. What does it mean? So how, what is the rest when you divide five with four? The rest would be one. Why would the rest be one? Well, because you can fit the four one time into the five and the rest of this one time is going to be also one. So let's make another example. Six percent four. The rest is two. And when we make seven percent four, the rest is three. And now when we make eight percent four, what what would be the rest? So the rest will not be four. The rest will be zero. Why will the rest be zero? Because the four fits two times in the eight and the rest, there is no rest. So the rest is zero. So we want to get exactly this div divisions where the rest is zero because then we know, aha, this is not a prime number because there is another number that it can actually be divided by. So we have to have some kind of check here. I'm going to do select uh, prime. I'm going to need another variable here because I have to make like a Boolean um, control statement here, which is true or false. Now, MSSQL doesn't have the Boolean type, but it has bit type. So we can just put the bit to zero or one. If it is not a prime number, we can make it to zero. So now we make add prime, which we just no, actually we don't write select here. We have to declare the variable. Declare prime is a bit variable. So we have to put this here. And if this equals zero is correct, then prime is one, no, zero. Then it is not a prime number. If it's zero, it's not a prime number. Okay, so let's assume in the beginning at the while loop that everything is a prime number. So we write at prime equals one. At first we are going to assume everything is a, is a prime number. So we write at prime equals one and then we make while divider bigger one. So now we go through this iteration from the divider and we check for the rest. If at nr percent divider equals zero, then prime is zero. Actually, we have to finish the statement here now. And now we still, which is very important, we still have to write at divider, select actually, yes. Select at divider equals at divider minus one. So we have to take one away from the divider, otherwise this while loop is never gonna finish because the divide, divider has to get smaller with every iteration. And now we can check everyone if every number below than the add nr number, if it's divided by this number. Okay, so now we check this one. So let's start from the beginning. What did we do? So we declared three variables. We defined here the start of the variables. We said nr is one, divider is nr minus one. This divider is equals nr minus one. Actually, we don't define that here. We define that after the while loop because at every start after after this uh, nr got changed, we also have to change the divider variable again. So if we go one up with the nr, we have to also set the divider variable again on one number below nr. So now we start with the while loop. So while uh, nr is now one, uh, while nr is smaller or equal to 1000, that one is smaller than 1000, so that fits. We begin the while loop, then we select the, then we set the divider variable. We set it to one smaller than nr. And we assume here that prime, that everything is a prime number. 
and now we are actually going to test for the prime number and therefore we define this divider and we are going to look if this divider is still bigger than one then we're going to make this test with a divider and with an r and if the rest equals zero then actually it is not a prime number and if this is never true then this prime will not change and then it is in the end a prime number and it will also then be inserted so the insertion part we still have to do so let's make a quick check if all the code is running correctly as we define it right now okay line 14 incorrect syntax near prime okay of course we have to write the select prime equals one that's how we define it and what is in another incorrect syntax line 18 probably the same mistake yes select prime equals zero okay it seems to be working no more errors in the code so this insertion of course is still wrong because we don't want 1001 in the end so let's write another insertion and we want to do it exactly after our prime number test so here is our prime number test and if it is after this while loop if it is a prime number then it got changed to zero if it's a uh, not a prime number otherwise it stays prime equals one so in the end after we made our prime number test if prime is still equals to one then we want to insert into our table prime numbers which we defined in the beginning we want to insert in the column number and we want to insert values the value from the variable nr let's see and in the end we select star from prime numbers so let's see what prime numbers we are putting in there if it's correct now okay it doesn't look too bad one two three five seven but actually the one is not defined as a prime number so we have to exclude the one but the other one looks good two three five seven looks good we still have to take out the one we can put this for example here in the if condition if prime equals one or at an r does not equal one so if it's if it equals one we don't want to put it actually in the table let's run this again now okay so the one is still in that should not be the case if prime equals one or nr not equal to one and of course we have to make a logical and and not an or because then just one of the conditions but both of the conditions actually have to be fulfilled so we have to write and okay so let, that looks good two three five seven and now of course the output is not yet exactly how we should look so it should be two and three and five everything into one row and for that we actually have to use another function in ms sql thankfully we have a function that can solve exactly this problem and i believe it is called string add so let's look this up again string add function ms sql so string add yes that sounds good oh string egg for aggregating ah not add but string egg a g g and what do we want to aggregate well we want to aggregate the column number we call it number here in the table and we want to use something between the aggregation the separator should be the ampersand sign here like in the beginning and that should be our solution okay it looks like we still have to put this like that and it works welcome everybody this problem is called interviews might we might run into some problems on the way where we do a wrong query or end up in the wrong solution and then we have to take it back from there and we have to restart and rethink our problem but this is very important for you guys also to see that so you know in the end because this will happen definitely to you also if you're trying to solve queries and more complex queries it will even happen more often so it's very important for you guys to see and then to know what you can do in that situation to get yourself out of it and to still solve the problem. So let's start with the interviews problem. 
Samantha interviews many candidates from different colleges using coding challenges and contests. Write a query to print the contest ID, hacker ID, name, and the sums of total submissions, total accepted submissions, total views, and total unique views. So I recommend you guys, if you see what you have to do, then you also should always write it down yourself. You, I'm just using here a text editor. You can do whatever you, whatever you favored. So Samantha interviews many candidates from different colleges. Write a query. So we want the output. What should we write for a query? To print the contest ID, we have to. We need the contest ID. We need the hacker ID. We need the name. We need the sum of total submissions. We need the sum of total accepted submissions. Sum of total views. And the sum of total unique views. Now I already have written myself what we need for an output. For each contest, it says. So we have to group by contest. Only by contest ID. Print this one for each contest, and my translation would be group by contest. This is not a query, this is just to get an idea what the end could look like. For each contest sorted by contest ID. Okay, sorted. We make with order by contest ID. Exclude the contests from the results if all four sums are zero. Exclude if all four sums are zero. So these are the conditions. First condition, what can we what do we have to put for an output? What columns do we need in the end in the query? Second condition, it has to group by contest ID. It should be for each contest. The output, um, third condition, we have to sort it by the contest ID, which is a very easy problem. Um, fourth condition, we have to exclude if all four sums are zero. So sum of total submissions, sum of total accepted submissions, and so on. If they are all zero, zero, then we should include, exclude it. So here, note, this is also always important. A specific contest can be used to screen candidates at more than one college. What I'm reading here is this note. But each college only holds one screening contest. OK, so this is about a relationship. A specific contest can be used to screen candidates at more than one college. So one contest can be on, for example, four colleges. But one college can only hold one screening contest. It cannot have multiple contests. So let's try. So we want to understand this problem. And so I'm trying to write these relationships in this paint picture. Specific contest. So let's write here contest. Can be used to screen candidates in more than one college. OK, here's the contest. Now we want the college. Relationship from contest to college. But each college only holds one screening contest. Okay. And then let's also do candidates. Because they also wrote about candidates. 
So one contest, we want to know the relationship between this contest and college. And also the relationship between college and contest. So one contest can be on more, more colleges, it says. A specific contest can be used to screen candidates at more than one college. Okay, then let's write here many. Why is it many? Because one contest, this describes the relationship from the contest to the college. One contest can be on many colleges. And let's go with the arrow back from colleges to contest. One college can hold one contest. So here we write one. Because a college can hold one contest, only one specific contest. A college cannot have multiple contests. So let's see the same with the candidates. So a contest can hold how many candidates? Of course, a contest naturally should hold many candidates. It can hold many candidates. How many candidates, how many uh, contests can a candidate make? So a candidate, I would think, is only in one college. There are no students in multiple college, what I assume. So a candidate can also just participate in one contest. So I write candidates can have one contest. Each candidate can only participate in one contest because he's in one college. And the college only offers one specific contest. So why did we do this? It is important to have the relationships between the entities that you use in your query clear. So we can use this later, this thinking, if we are building our query. Okay, let's look at the input format. So we have a contest table. The contest ID is the ID of the contest. Hacker ID is the idea of the hacker who created the contest. And name is the name of the hacker. So hacker ID and name. Is that the hacker ID of the name that we also need here? So contest ID definitely we need also here. Hacker ID and name. Let's see if hacker ID is anywhere else. College, contest, challenge, college. Challenge, total views, total unique views. Challenge, total submission, total acceptance submissions. Okay, so we don't have, we only have one time hacker ID and name in the contest table. So this, what we need here, the output, contest ID, hacker ID name, they mean the ID of the hacker who created that contest, and with name, they mean the name of the hacker who created that contest. So the three columns from the beginning, we can get already from here, contest ID, hacker ID name. That is the contest table. The colleges table, the college ID is the ID of the college and contest ID is the ID of the content that Samantha used to screen the candidates. College ID and contest ID. Okay. Challenges. Challenge ID is the ID of the challenge that belongs to one of the contests whose contest ID Samantha forgot. And college ID is the ID of the college where the challenge was given to candidates. So we have here challenge ID and college ID. Few stats. The challenge ID is the idea of the challenge. Total views is the number of times the challenge was viewed by candidates. And total unique views, the number of times the challenge was viewed by unique candidates. Okay, total views, total unique views. We need that here, total views and total unique views as a sum. We need it as a sum. 
And now we have a last table. So in, in the end, we have one, two, three, four, five tables. Okay. Submission stats is the last table with challenge ID, total submissions, and total accepted submissions. Everything is of type integer, as you can see, except we have one string, which is the name of the hacker. So the sums should be no problem because we have everything of type integer. Good. What we have to sum. So here's the sample input. Contest ID, hacker ID, name. College ID, contest ID. Challenge ID, college ID. So we have to combine the challenge with a contest. But because every college only has one contest, we can combine it like this. So the challenge ID is connected to the college ID. And the college ID, we can directly know from this college ID, for example, 11219. We can know that this college ID can only, can only belong to the contest 66406 because the college cannot have multiple contests, contests. It can only have this one contest because this was the condition. So basically we know that 18765 challenge ID can only belong to contest 66406. That way we can com we can connect the challenge ID to the contest ID. Okay, and what do we have to think? So we have here contest ID, hacker ID name that are already three columns that we need. In the output, if we look at our notes, contest ID, hacker ID name, then we need total submissions, accepted submissions, views, and unique views. We have this from one time this table, total views, total unique views, and here total submissions, total accepted submissions. So basically what we have to think is how can we combine contest ID, hacker ID name with total views, total unique views, and also with total submissions, total accepted submissions. So we have as we said, one, two, three, four, five tables. And we have to know how we can connect this table with this beginning in the beginning table and also this table with this table in a meaningful way that also solves our problem. So how it started this problem. Uh, by the way, here is also an explanation. Sum of total submission, 27 plus 56 plus 28 equals 111. So this is the example from the first row, from rows. Rose has total submission is the fourth, I think it's the fourth, 111, yes. It says sum is 111. So let's look at the total submissions. Six six four zero six is used in the college one one two one nine. The contest ID is six six four zero six. Yes, one one two nine nine is the college. And this college one one two one nine has two challenges one eight seven six five four seven one two seven. So how do we can check this total submissions? 27, 56, 28. So 27, 27 is from 4, 7, 1, 2, 7. Ah, this is the challenge ID here. So 1, 1, 2, 1, 9. This is the college ID that belongs to the contest 66406. So we have here this 27 from 4, from challenge ID 47127. Then we have 56, also from challenge ID 47127. And 28, also from the 47127. So the other challenge, 18765, has no submissions. It's not in the submission stats table. So all three numbers are from the challenge 47127. Okay. And now we just sum them together. We have 111, which we have to output here. Okay, so this is a lot to do. So how can we start this the best? 
I'm using MS SQL Server as usual. How can we start this the best? So let's look at our, our output. So we have to print contest ID, hacker ID, name, total submission, total acceptance submission, total views, total unique views. Okay. So what I would try to start because this is a lot of problems. I would try to start with some, some way. So for example, we can start with a contest ID, hacker ID name. We have to, we can try this and then we go from there. We already know that we have contest ID, hacker ID name and the first contest table. So let's just try select R from, so how is the contest table called? Probably just contest, right? Yes, contest, unquote. So what we got out. Now we have the contest ID, hacker ID and name. Great, so we already have the first three columns because we need in the first three contest ID, hacker ID, name. So we already have a part of the solution. You always want to, if you have a complex problem, do a small part of the solution and then try to figure your way from there. So because, so we can understand it better that this output is from the first three columns, we are gonna write them also here. So we were gonna write contest ID, hacker ID name. Contest ID, hacker ID name. Maybe I should better put this one here and this one here. And then also drag it a little bit here so we can have a better overview. Contest ID, hacker ID name. Now this should produce the same output. Now we have the same output, okay. So next one, we want to have sum of total submissions. We already saw sum of total submissions is here in the submission stats table. So the question, how can we connect the total submissions with the beginning table? Contest ID, hacker ID name. Usually this kind of problems you do over joins, you join the tables together and you cannot join this directly with this beginning table, contest table. Because we have here challenge ID, total submission, total acceptance submissions. No column that is also used here, contest ID, hacker ID name. They don't have a common column. So we have to go somewhere else. Challenge ID, total submission, total acceptance submissions. Here we also have the set challenge ID. But right now we don't want the total views, total unique views that comes later, but we don't want it now. We want just to get this next column, sum of total submissions. So we try to connect this one with another challenge ID table. And this is here, the challenges table. It has a challenge ID, college ID. We have to connect the challenge ID with this table. So we have the college ID with the challenges table. And from the challenges table, we can still not go to the contest ID, to the contest table, because we still have no common column. We have challenge ID, college ID, but we don't have this in the first table. So we have to go over the colleges table. And here we have college ID and contest ID. Uh, finally, we have the contest ID. And with the contest ID from the colleges table, we can now go to the first table. And we have also a, the contest, where we also have the contest ID. So basically what we want to do is go from the submission stats table back to the challenges, to the colleges, and then to the contests. This is uh, the way back. Or uh, because we uh, go here from the contest table, we can do, we go uh, like this. So we join from the contest, we join the colleges table. How can we join that with the contest ID? So let's take the contest cont. And then join colleges call. Call on call.contest ID equals con 
Punkt Contest. Let's see if he does that one. Okay, we have a problem here. Ambiguous column name contest ID. Okay. He doesn't know from which table he should take contest ID because they are in contest and college table. So we make conch dot contest ID and here we make conch dot hacker ID conch dot name. So we are sure that he knows from which table he takes it. Okay, so now we have an output. So this join works. Worked, we joined the contest with the colleges. So now we have to go from the colleges to the challenges table. We have the college ID, contest ID, college ID we have in common here. So let's make inner join colleges call on call dot con. What is that? We have college ID, right? College ID equals challenges dot college ID. Let's try this code. Okay, obviously he has an error here. The correlation name call is specified multiple times in the from clause. How do we go from here? So there is there is a solution that we can take. There are two ways actually. I would like to go with the with statement. If you are doing uh, complex SQL queries, it is very essential that you know the with statement. We can just Google SQL with statement, SQL with clause. So we have a temporary table actually. We have a temporary table, so we make a small table with a with statement. And in this table that we are creating only here, so for example, we have here five tables, and then we create another ta small table. And then we can use the table that we are creating immediately in the next select statement that we put below this table. And that way we can make much more complex queries without having to create new tables because we are only creating the table temporarily for this uh, select query that we are doing here. And what kind of table do we want to create? So we would like to create a table that has the total submissions in it because we need the total submissions. This is the next one that we want to figure out sum of total submissions. So in this table, we need the contest ID, definitely. So we can, uh, we can connect it to the contest table and we need the total submissions. So probably we are creating this table with total submissions, with challenges table, and with colleges table. In this table, we put in front of another query that we are doing under that. I would recommend you really try yourself with a with statement, try to do some queries with a with statement in order to understand complex SQL queries, because then you can really do so much more than if you can just do normal select statements. Okay, so we have this query here. Let's actually put this away and put it on the side. Um, SQL queries, I'm just gonna save this one here. Maybe I need it to write it again later. So first let's try to make this select statement that we want. So we leave this contest out for it now because we saw that with contest is not working. To join at the other tables, we can actually delete this one here because it doesn't make any sense. So let's try to take stuff from the colleges table. Like college ID, what do we have here? Contest ID. Contest ID from colleges. Okay, so this output worked. So let's go from colleges. Now we can do the joins from colleges to challenges over the challenge ID. A college ID, yes. College ID they have in common, okay. And then join. We need the challenges table here. So let's make colleges call. Challenges chill on 
No, it's actually written in with a capital letter. It works, but it's better with a capital letter. In a joint challenges shell on shell dot college ID, and we need the call dot college ID. Let's see if this one is also working. Okay, so we have the same problem. Biggest columns name college ID. We already know what that means. He wants to have call punk college ID and call punk contest ID. We have to name the column so he knows where to take the columns from. Okay, so now we have a result again. And we connected the college the colleges table with the challenges table. Okay, so let's join the other table now. Inner join. dot challenge ID on here's the submission stats table. Now let's take this submission stat inner join submission stats submission stats is on shell dot challenge ID equals SS dot challenge ID. See if this works. Okay, great. We also connected the submission stats table. So why did we actually did that? We want the total submissions. Okay, so we don't actually need the college ID to print out. We need to print out the contest ID. And we need the total submissions. And this comes from submission stats, SS table, SS dot total submissions on this post. Okay, great. So he puts an output. So now we have the call upon contest ID, which we connect can connect to our first table. And we have the total submissions, which is great. So now we have the first query, and now we have this query. So now comes the with statement in place. So we, we say with, and then we call this temporary table. We want to call it total submit s. Now we have to write this one in brackets and not put the semicolon here and break close the bracket. And then we write under that we write our new select statement, our old select statement. And now we try to run it again. So we have this one is our temporary table and now another query under it. Okay, so this was also working. So now we want to use actually this table above in the query under it. So how do we do this one? So actually here we have the inner join colleges, which we don't need right now anymore because we have contest ID hacker ID name all comes from contests, which we can see here, cont dot, cont dot, cont dot. So let's forget about this join here. Actually, we don't have to erase at all. We just erase inner join until inner join. And now let's take the total submit table, which we just made in the with statement and join it here. Total submit TS on TS dot. And we have in common the contest ID because we have it here and we have it also here. Contest ID equals cont dot contest 
ID. And now, because we joined the total submit, we can also get some of uh, TS. Now it's called TS because here total submit TS dot total submissions. Let's see if this one runs. Okay, column, we have a mistake. Column contest dot contest ID is invalid in the select list because it is not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause. So that tells us that we forgot the group by clause. We have to write it under this in a join and then we have to write group by and everything that is not in the sum here, we have to put in the group by actually. So what is not in the sum? Contest ID, hacker ID name. So we have to group by con dot contest ID, con dot hacker ID, con dot name. Let's run this again. Okay, we got an we got a result. And now we have the contest ID, the hacker ID, the name, and the sum of total submissions. Great. So we have the next column solved, total submissions. Now next one is sum of total accepted submissions. Okay, accepted submissions was also in this table, so we don't really have to do, put any more logic in it. We just have to get another column here, ss dot total accepted submissions. We get it from here. And here we make the sum of ts dot total accepted submissions. Well, let's see if this runs. Great, this also runs. So we have now contest ID, hacker ID, name, total submissions, and total accepted submissions. Now oh, that's pretty much already from the output. So now we need sum of total views and sum of total unique views. So total views, how do we get this total views? We have here total views and total unique views. So this table looks very similar. Challenge ID, total views, total unique views to the table we already did here. Challenge ID, total submissions, total accepted submissions. So we already know we can do the same connections that we did before. We, st we also have the same problem with contest table. And we know that we also need a temporary table like we made now with the total submit table because we run into the same problems that we had before. And we know that we have to combine the challenge ID with the challenges table and with the colleges table to get the contest ID. So it looks very similar, build up. So what we can actually do here is we can take we can make another temporary table. So in the with statement, you cannot just put one uh, temporary table in front of the select statement. No, you can do as many as you like. That's why we, this with statement is very powerful. So you can just take, you can just copy this. And now you make comma behind these brackets. And now we, how do we want to call this other one? Total submit, we call this one. Let's take a total view as, now we put the one that we just copied from, so we copied the total submit table again, because this is gonna be a very similar statement. And, now we have a second temporary table in our statement. So we need now call dot contest ID. We don't need total submissions or total accepted submissions, but we need total views. We need total views and total unique views. So total views and total unique views. This is also probably not going to be called SS. 
So we take from colleges call, that is correct. We start at the colleges table, as we did with the other statement. Then we make an inner join challenges. Yes, this is also correct. We want to join the challenges on ID equals call.collegeID. Then we take an inner join submission stats. No, this is not correct. This time we don't want submission stats table, but we want the view stats table. View underscore stats is the table, okay. So not submission, but view stats. And this we call VS. On challenge ID is correct from the table above. Equals VS dot challenge ID, okay. So this should work out. Uh, of course, we have here the VS dot total views, and here also the VS dot total unique views. So this looks okay. Let's see if this code runs. Okay, great. This code is running. It gives us an output. So what do we need? Some total submissions, some of total accepted submissions. Now we make the sum of, so no, let's first join it, not the sum. Let's first make a join here. Take the inner join. What we need now, total view, total view, TV on tv.contest ID, same as before, equals cont.contest ID. So we have the sum of total accepted submissions. Now we have the sum of TV dot total views and the sum of TV dot total unique views. This already looks like the output that we need. Contest ID to sum of total unique views. Let's run the code here. Okay, so we get an output. We get the contest ID, the hacker ID, the name. We get the total submissions, total accepted submissions, total views, total unique views. Okay, we get all the columns that we need. Group by contest ID, hacker ID, name. Order by contest ID. So now I'm looking at the requirements. What else do we need? So we cut this output columns. Another requirement was to group by contest ID. We did that also. Another requirement is to order by contest ID. We're going to do that now. Order by contest ID. And another one, exclude if all four sums are zero. So if all these four sums are zero, we should exclude it. And because this is aggregated and we want to put it in a WHERE clause, we cannot put it in the WHERE clause because it's sums. Sum of something is an aggre aggregated value and you cannot put it in the WHERE clause, but we can put it in a HAVING clause. So the HAVING clause actually comes as the last statement before ORDER BY. So ORDER BY is always the last statement. And before that we have the HAVING. And there we want some I'm going to copy this one. Some of TS dot total submissions. So everything, if all four sums are zero, then it should be excluded. So we say if sum of total submissions is bigger than zero, then we write or, then we write the other sum, bigger zero, or the sum bigger zero or the other so sum bigger zero. So if any of the four sums is bigger than zero, then we want to include it. That means it only gets excluded if all four sums are zero. And this is exactly what we need. So having sum bigger zero, bigger zero, bigger zero, or so if any of them is bigger than zero, 
then we want to include it. So let's run this one. Okay, it's running. But we still don't have the correct answer. So actually, we would expect now, because we wrote everything, we put all the conditions in that we get the right answer. Let's see how many lines we have. We have 47 lines here. So that means 47 contests with submissions or total views. So what can we do now? Because we still don't have the right answer, which we would expect to have the right answer. So this is actually critical phase because now you can test. So let's test one of the solution we have with the hacker name Rose. Let's see about Rose. Let's write a test. These are the values for Rose. So we see the contest ID 845, hacker ID 579, and so on. And total submission sum is 67,558. Let's write the sum of total submissions equals 67,558. And now let's test if this is really the correct sum. So first, my solution. First, I'm going to save this query. So now we try if this row is really true. So let's save this query so we don't lose it for later. And now let's try the total submission. So we want to see the total submissions. So let's try this total submissions table. And now we want to have, we want to test one row, yeah, with the contest ID 845. So let's make where contest ID equals 5. So we take the total submissions table that we create here and we want to see the contest ID 845 to see if our solutions are actually correct. So total submissions should be from our side 67,558. And here we have total submissions and total accepted submissions. Okay, so let's take this one. The result that we took here. This is all 845, this is correct. And let's take it in an Excel sheet. Now we want to know what is the sum actually of the total submissions. Of course, we can also just make the sum there. But let's, let's just take this data. And Let's separate the data. Okay, now here we have the sum of total submissions. That is actually 1,987. 1,987 is the sum here. So this is definitely not this 67,558. So an easier way to get the sum is just to get it here in this table. Sum of ss.totalsubmissions. Sum of ss.totalacceptedsubmissions. And we also have to group by because we made an aggregate. Group by call contest. Let's see how this works. Okay, so we got the sum of total submissions in 1987 and the total accepted submissions of this is 580. We got this one out from the table. This is not, this is not the same as we got out before. 
at our big query, 67,588,558. So that's actually a big difference. So we might made a mistake when we did the sum in the end of the query. So let's take the query again. We actually did the sum here in the end. But what we could do now to solve that, because we now, we had the right sum here in the total submit pre uh, temporary table. So actually, let's try to make the sum already in the table before. So we write here sum of ss.total submissions and sum of ss.total accepted submissions. So the same for the other one, for the total view table, sum of vs.total views. Sum of VS the total unique views. Because we made the sum, we also have to do the group by. Group by call contest ID. Here the same. Group by call dot contest ID. Okay, so we grouped it here. We already made the sum here. So wait, let's give it also a name. Sum of total sum of SS dot total submissions as sum PS comma sum of SS dot total accepted submission as sum Total accepted submission, TAS. Sum of ES dot total reviews as sum TV. Sum of ES, comma. Sum of ES dot total unique views as sum TUV. So we took then sums before in the temporary tables. So now we only have to get these columns. So T is not a total submission, but we need T S dot sum T S. T S dot sum T S and T S dot sum T A S. Sum T A S comma comma and TV dot total views is also wrong now. TV dot sum TV, comma. TV dot total unique views is also wrong. TV dot sum TUV total unique views. Okay, so we actually don't have any aggregate function here anymore in the last one. So we also don't need the group by here. And the having is not having anymore because it's not aggregated. And we put it in the where clause where and ts dot sum ts is the sum of ts total submission. ts dot sum tas and that ts dot sum tv after that and ts dot sum tuv after that. So if any of them is bigger than zero, then we want to include it. So in the on the contrary, we exclude it if all four sums are zero, then it's excluded. Okay, so now we already summed it before where we get the right solutions in the temporary tables. And now in the end, we are just taking the sums 
out of the temporary tables than we did before with our with statement. And we all we put all the requirements. We put all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns that we have to put out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We take it from contests. We join it with the temporary tables. Then we have the another condition: all if all four sums are zero, then it then it's excluded. We have it here. We have the order by the contest ID, and we have to group it by contest ID. We already did the grouping, not here, but in the temporary tables before. Group by contest ID. So we should have all the requirements set. Now let's see if we get now the right solution. Congratulations, we got it. So now guys, we solved together a hard SQL hackering problem. So please like and subscribe if you like this video. Comment if you have any questions about it and see you in the next one. We are solving the hardest problem on hackering in SQL. Don't forget to like and subscribe Comment down below for any questions and enjoy the video. So let's dive right in. Today we are going to do 15 days of learning SQL. Julia conducted a 15 days of learning SQL contest. The start date of the contest was March 1, 2016 and the end date was March 15, 2016. Write a query to print total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day starting on the first day of the contest and find the hacker ID and name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. If more than one such hacker has a maximum number of submissions, print the lowest hacker ID. The query should print this information for each day of the contest sorted by the date. And for that we have two input tables. The first one is hackers table which with just two columns, hacker ID and name. And the second one is the submissions table with four columns, submission date, submission ID, hacker ID, and score. For that, we also have a sample output. We can see here the sample input from the tables, hacker ID name, and the four columns from the submissions tables. And this is how it should look like in the end. So this is the sample output. So we have each day, 1st of March, 2nd March, 3rd of March, and so on. Then we have the count of the hacker who made at least one submission each day. And this is the most crucial column that we have to get right here. This is also the hardest one to get right. So the second column, what does it actually mean that made an, a submission each day? So in the 1st of March, four people made a submission in this sample output. In the 2nd of March, two people made a submission on the 2nd of March that also did a submission on the 1st of March. So they have to do it each day. If you don't make a submission one day, then you're out. You have to make it continuously. If you made it on the 1st of March, you have to do it 2nd, 3rd, 4th, otherwise you're not counted anymore. That's why this number can never go down, can never go up again. So we have a four in the in the first of March, then we have two in the second, and then it just stays the same. So the, the hacker submitted again the next day, or it goes down. Here it goes to one, and then in the last one it is one. It will never go up again. This is very important to remember. So let's write as always in a short note what we actually have to do. So, so as we see here in the sample output, we have to get four columns. Output goal. So first one is submission date. Okay, that should be pretty easy. So we just get the submission date for every day. We have 15 days. As it says, 15 days of learning SQL, and we get just get for each day, we get the submission dates out. Okay, fair enough. Then, number of hackers who made submission each 
day. That's the second column that we have to get right. So each day they have to make the submission and unique hackers. So unique hackers, what does it mean? We need a distinct number of distinct hackers. We can already write that here. Number of distinct hackers who made a submission each day. What's the third column that we have to get? The third column is a hacker ID. So we get it from here, hacker ID from the submissions table, which is also the same uh, column as in the hackers table. And what should be the hacker ID? Hacker ID of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. So hacker ID of hacker who made max number of submissions. And the fourth one, <coughs> the fourth one is just the name of that hacker. So the fourth one is just the name, it's the same uh, query, it's just the name. Hacker name of the three. So we have conditions, order condition for three and four. So that for the maximum hacker, we have order condition. What's the order condition for them? Hacker ID and name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. If more than one such hacker has a maximum number of submissions, print the lowest hacker ID. Okay, so first uh, maximum submission, second lowest hacker ID. Okay, so let's start slow and let's go to MS SQL and just get out, for example, the submissions table from submissions select star from submissions so let's get all these submissions table okay so here we have the submission date we have what is the second submission id hacker id and score okay so submission date let's write it down submission date what do we need Submission ID, hacker ID, and score. Submission ID, hacker ID, and score. Okay, so the first column that we want is the submission date. So let's get this submission date. Select submission date from submissions. Run this. Okay, so now we get very often the same submission date because we get it for every row that we have. And we have a row for every submission that we got. But we don't want a row for every submission. We just want the submission date to be one time in here. So what do we do? We make group by submission date. So then we can just get it one time. Okay, so now we have it one time and this doesn't look very ordered. So we also make an order by submission date. So this is how we get the first column, right? So we get the first column and then we do the same for the second, the third and the fourth. And we try to combine it on the way. So now we have the order right from the 1st of March to the 15th of March. Okay, so what is the next one that we want to get? We want to get the number of distinct hackers who made submission each day. So let's take the first approach to solution for 1st of March. So to make it a bit easier, let's do it first just for the 1st of March. So for the 1st of March, we would do count the distinct hacker, hackers. Okay, so we make a count from distinct 
Taker ID. Group by submission date is correct. Order by submission date is also correct. We need a comma. So, and then we want to have it for the 1st of March first. So we make where submission date like 2016, three, one. Okay, great. So we already have the two, the first two columns for the first date. So we have the 1st of March, 2016, and we have 112 distinct hackers who made at least one submission in that day. So now the third column, the hacker ID of hacker who made maximum number of submissions. And the hacker name is the, the first column. So they are basically pretty similar. We get the logic right, and then we get the hacker ID and the hacker name out of it. So how can we get that now? So let's put this code for to the side for one moment. First two columns, we got this code. And now let, let's think about it a bit separately. Hacker ID of hacker who made maximum number of submissions. So one way to think about that would be with a row number. Select so in a row number, you can give uh, every row a number and you can have two arguments, partition, you can partition the row and you can order the row. So let me show you what it means. Row number MS SQL and why we can use it in this instance. So here we have the row number and let's take this one, this example out of here. So we want to count the rows because why do we want to count the rows? We want to get the maximum. Why do we have to count the rows? Well, in the row number, we can give the maximum Hacker, the hacker who made the maximum number of submissions, we can give, we can put him, put him on the top, so he gets the number one, and then everybody else gets number two, three, four, five, and so on. So if we do that, then in another query, in the next query, we can just ask for the number one row, and then we get the maximum hacker, the hacker with the maximum submissions. So row number over, so partition, by what do we want to partition? Partition means we start again, counting from one. So row number gives every row a number. That's why it's called function row number. And partitioning, by what, do, when do we want to start counting again? We want to start counting again when we come to a new submission date. Then we want to get a new count because we want to get again the maximum hacker. In the 1st of March, we want to get the maximum hacker as a row number one. And in the 2nd of March, we want to get him again as the row number one. So we start counting again. So we want to make a partition by the submission date. We want to partition by that and order by, by what do we want to order? So we want to get on top the one with the maximum number of submissions. So we want to count the submission, what is called submission ID. We want to count the submission ID. Wait, no, not the submission ID. The submission ID is always just one. We want to count the hacker ID. How many times is the hacker ID going to appear on that, on that particular day? For example, here Angela is in the sample output. Angela has the hacker ID 2703. 2703 is here one time and 2703 is here two times and here also again three times. 
So that's why she's on top. She has the most submissions. So we count the hacker ID. To get them on top, we have to actually make descending to get the maximum on top. And then we need a second order condition. Then we want the lowest hacker ID on top. If they are both the same from the count of hacker ID, then we want the lowest hacker ID. So we make hacker ID is scanning so that the lowest is on top. We, we don't have to write a scanning and automatically doing a scanning, but we are writing it here. Okay, great. So this is how we get the row number right as row number. So what else do we want? We want the hacker ID out. We want the submission date. We want the hacker name. What's it called actually? Just name. And the column, column is just name. And now from where do we want to get it? From submissions table. And we want to join because the name is not in the submissions table. We want to join with the hackers table. Join hackers on, on what can we join? On the hacker ID equals S dot hacker ID. We also have to group because we have an hacker guide. We have an aggregate function which is count. So we have to group everything that is not in the count. So we have to group the submission date, the hacker ID, the name. And hacker ID, actually, we have to say which hacker ID because we have two hacker IDs in the submissions and in the hackers table. S dot hacker ID, we count also the S dot hacker ID. Submission date, it's fine. Hacker ID, S dot hacker ID, the standing. Okay. So I think that it, that's it. Let's run this code and try it out. Okay, let's make this big for a moment. So what do we have here? We have Denise on top. In the 1st of March. And then goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on. And then here it starts with the next. After 112 hackers, it starts with the next. Then we get Ruby on top. So the question is, is that on top here, the maximum hacker, the one that is with an count number one here, 81314. Is that the one with the maximum submissions? So let's check that out because we want to test it, right? We want to know. So what do we do? Let's take this one to the side, get third, and four columns. And let's make select. So wait, let's remember which one was number one. Denise here. Denise number one was on top. Number one for first of March. So let's select star from Submission date where submission, not submission date from submissions, where submission date like 2016.31. And let's order this by the hacker ID. You can also order it by the count of hacker ID. And we can select hacker ID, count of hacker ID. Group by hacker ID to see if she's on top. Okay, then here we can actually see that 81313 is the only one with uh, three submissions. 
So this is indeed the one with the most submissions for that day. So let's go back to the query that we had for the third and fourth column. Let's put this one again. And now you can see also why I did that here in the separately, because I'm going to take this this query now for the third and fourth column. So what actually we want, we want the hacker ID out. We need the row number because we have to filter after the first one from the row number. We need the hacker ID because we have to give it out. We need the submission date because we are going to join it over the submission date and we need the name because also this is also part of the output. So we make with max hacker and we make it as a, its own table. And now we are going to take the first one after this, the first two columns from submission date, 1st of March. And now we can just join them from submissions, join max hacker on, we join it on the submission date because everyone because then we get uh, for every submission date we get just one row. Why is that? Because we also make the only also just get the first row number. So submissions s on max hacker mh mh dot submission date equals s dot submission date and this is important row number equals to one so we get the max hacker out so we need the submission date what else do we need submission date number of distinct hackers yes then we need the hacker ID. We need that from the maximum hackers table. Hacker ID. Submission date is from the submissions table. This is also from the submissions table, the hacker ID. And we need the name also from the maximum hackers table. mh.name. So now we get the four columns out. Okay, so submission date is actually a lot of times here in the query and we still have to say which submission state s dot submission state s dot submission date where s dot submission date like 2016 3 1 max dot hacker id is invalid okay so it's not grouped enough so we have the submission count from this uh, hacker id so we have to group everything else we only group the submission date. We also have to group the hacker ID. mh.hacker ID and also the mh.name. Okay, great. So now we have for the 1st of March, we have 112 distinct hackers and we have the maximum submission from hacker ID 81314 from Denise. So let's take out this submission date like 2016-3-1 and let's run this one now so and now we have for each day so it still says wrong answer so the question is why it's saying wrong answer now because we have uh, the submission date we have count distinct we made a count distinct from the hacker id we gave the one with the maximum hacker id out and also with the, the name from the maximum hacker so the question is why we still have wrong answer. Well, we talked in the beginning about that, that the second column is the most tricky one here. And we can see that we have 112 distinct in the first one and the second one 144, which is more than in the first one, which is impossible because the, the hackers have to submit each day in order to be counted. And if they didn't submit here on the first day in the 112, they cannot be counted in the second day. Now that doesn't be uh, count for the maximum hacker. The maximum hacker is made every day new again. And it doesn't matter if 
the ma maximum hacker wasn't at all in the first of March. If Ruby was not there in the first of March, uh, it can still make the most submissions in the uh, second of March. But for the second column, it really has to be the hacker has to be there every day. So that's why this is still wrong. And actually all the other columns are right. So the submission dates, we got them right. We have exactly 15 submission dates with uh, 15 days uh, dates uh, variables here. That's fine. And we have the maximum hacker ID and the maximum name. And to get this row right, we have to figure out how we can how we can remember which one was in the first, which one was in the second, which one was in the third. We have to kind of remember that throughout the 15 days. And then we have to also give it out in the second column and it can only go lower or equal from every number. So this has to, it can never go up here. In the first part, we have here the four columns and uh, they are all correct except the second column where we count the hacker for each day. And to be able to count the hacker for each day, we are going to start a new query now. This one we are going to save here on the side. We are going to lead it later again. This is the part one query. We are going to have to change it a little bit here on this column where it is not right. And we are going to develop the query now for the second column. So what we have to know here are three concepts that we are going to introduce for this in order to achieve this. We're going to use a table variable. We're going to use variables and we are going to use the while loop. So the variables, I'm sure you heard of them uh, before, like they are just like an empty shelf where you can say, for example, a number uh, or a date. And the table variable, it's the same thing, just that it's not just for one number, but for a whole table. And in that way, you can save a whole table. Um, you don't have to create a new table for it. You can just save it in a variable if you just need it temporarily now for this query as we are doing. So it is a, the syntax is a little bit to get used to, but in basic concept is not so complicated. So I already have this tab here open where it explains about the table variable in SQL check. Both with variables and with table variables, we have to declare them before we can use them. And we are declaring now a table variable. I'm going to use this as a template. So this is my table variable. So what table variable do we want? We want the hackers Yes, we want to have the, let's call them consistent hackers. So we want the hackers that they really um, submitted each day. We want to have them in this table and we want to count them for all 15 days. So that's why we call them consistent ha hackers. They consistently submitted uh, their uh, submission every day. And we want the hacker ID. We just call it hacker ID as in the other table too. And what's the data type for this hacker ID? It's int, it's integer data type. And then we also want to save the submission date. We want to know uh, on which submission date this hacker ID uh, was still in the race. So uh, on which submission uh, date, not submission ID, submission date, this hacker was still submitting consistently. So, Okay, so now we have the table variable, consistent hackers. And we're also going to need um, normal variables in this one. And we also have to declare them. We declare, we have to need a variable for submission date because we have to go through 15 submission dates here from 1st of March until 15th of March. And we don't want to write like 15 queries in order to solve that we would like to iterate through a variable that is the submission date and we are just counting the submission date higher for the first the second the third march and so on so we declare the sub date i call the submission date variable sub date and which data type should it be it's a date data type as in the table variable it was also a date data type it's a submission date and now we need another date variable 
and that is called remaining remaining date. So in the remaining date variable, uh, we are we are going to need that for a join so that we can look in the hackers table uh, in the consistent hackers who is actually still rema remaining at this point of time that they in the consistent hackers table. So let's do that first for the first day, like the first March 2016. And therefore, and therefore we want to insert all the hackers that are still in the race in the first of March into the consistent hackers table. So we make an insert into in the consistent hackers table and uh, which what do we want to insert we want to insert the hacker id and the submission date from submissions from the submissions table from which date where submission date like 2016 first first of march 2016 okay and then just to check it, we print it out, select star from consistent. So now we can use the hacker the table variable and we can actually print it out just like a normal table in the end. Select star from, you would also write just submissions, but now you just write at consistent hackers. Both the variable and the table variable always need an at in the syntax in MSSQL before you write them. And now let's run this code. Might be that the semicolon was missing. Okay, so we wrote form and not, we have to write from. Okay, so now what you can see is that we queried now the consistent hackers table variable. And you can see here the hacker ID and the date from submissions where submission date like 2016-31. Okay, so we have all the hackers that they are still in the race in the 1st of March. So if we would now count the distinct values of these hacker IDs, we would get for the 1st of March already the right number. Now we also have to get, uh, have to make the table for the 2nd of March, for the 3rd of March and so on until the 15th of March. We want to put all the hacker IDs in that table and only as many as they are still remaining at each day. So that's why are these only the consistent hackers in this table. Okay, so now we did for the 1st of March. Now let's do for the next days also. For that we need a while loop. And uh, how is the while loop working? How is the syntax working? Well, a while loop you need if you just want to iterate over, for example, um, a table. And the syntax is like that, that you need uh, um, a condition until when do you want to iterate. So we say while subdate smaller than 2016.3.15 because this is the last date that we want to iterate over 15 days of learning SQL and it is until March 15, 2016. So now we also have to initialize while well, subdate um, smaller 2016 315 and now I think it comes begin. Let's look at the sister uh, syntax. Yes, we now need a begin and an end. Okay, and that is the basically the syntax for the while. Now it's very important in the while loop that you will change your variables in the while loop. So you have to iterate over them. So we actually in this variables submission date that we, we want to use them now, sub date and remaining date, but we didn't initialize them at all. So what does it mean to initialize a variable? First we declared it that we did here in line eight and nine, declare sub date date and nine declare remaining date date. So now we need to initialize it. And that we do, we are going to do it like this. Set subdate equals. So the first value should be 2016.31, the first of March, the submission date is the first value. And then set 
actually we should uh, initialize them outside of the while loop because we don't want to initialize that every time again when the while loop is running we want to initialize it just one time so we have to do it outside of the loop so it's not going to run again and again and again so set subdate equal to 2016.3.1 that is initialization of the subdate now we need to initialize the remaining date set remaining date equal to 2016.3.1 okay so now we initialized both of our variables so how do we begin when while subdate smaller 2016 315 so for the 1st of March we already have our consistent hackers written into the, the our table variable so we don't need that anymore so now we start at the 2nd of March with a submission date with a subdate how do we add now one day to it because we want to iterate we want to add we want to go from uh, 1st of March submit subdate to 2nd of March subdate and we can do that with date add from date add function just will give you can add a day a month or a year now we want to add a day how many days we want to add one to what do we want to add the date subdate so in the semicolon is, uh, now and that is called manipulating the variable so first we declared it now we then we initialized the variable and now we manipulated it to give it another day and now let's insert again into consistent hackers insert into consistent hackers because this table variable we created so that we insert all the consistent hackers into it we did it for the first day and now we are using this while loop to do it for the second until the last day from the 15 days so now we insert into consistent hackers what do we want to insert well we want to insert select the hacker id and the submission date from what from what do we want to insert that from submissions and we call it s here because we're going to do a join again s dot hacker id s dot submission date where submissions like like the variable subdate oh by the way we have to say who should uh, get the date at from uh, day one uh, subdate so the variable subdate should get this date at so subdate equals date at and then you make the function day one and subdate so we insert into the consistent hackers we select the hacker id and the submission date to insert them into consistent hackers from the submissions table where submissions like subdate what is subdate now subdate is uh, the first of march plus one day so the second of march right now so now we would insert all the hackers ids and uh, the submission date which will always be second of march as uh, this is the where bedingung second of march uh, insert them all into our table variable but we don't want everyone from second of march we only want the hackers from 2nd of March, as you remember, that they are consistently submitting. What does it mean consistently? Each day. They have to submit each day. So now we, that we are in the second day, how can we make sure that the hackers from the first day are also submitted into this second day? For that, we have to make an intersection, a join, with what do we want to join we want to join with the consistent hackers table where we already write who consistently updated until now so we join with consistent hackers let's say c8 
on what do we want to join? ch dot hacker ID. We want to join on the hacker ID because that's what we want the hackers that they submitted every uh, every day equals s dot hacker ID and another condition. The other condition is submission date should be like remaining date remaining date so remaining date means the people the, the hackers that are still remaining in the, in that date and the date is now 1st of march 2016 so we are asking from the submissions table where the submissions are like the 2nd of March and we are joining with our consistent hackers table and the consistent hackers table has on the remaining date which is the 1st of March now saved which hackers are still remaining in the 1st of March so we make this intersection and that's how we get all the remaining hackers okay so we do have the intersection now we have the join and now we have to iterate also through the remaining date so we have to do the same again here remaining date should also get one more remaining date remaining date so how is going to look at the 3rd of march then so let's try to think uh, through that one now. So we put the remaining date one more. So we put it from 1st of March to 2nd of March. So let's imagine now we are starting at the beginning again at the while loop. Okay, so the sub date we are adding one more. So then we are at the 3rd of March instead of the 2nd of March. So we are asking all the hackers from the 3rd of March where submissions like subdate, so subdate is 3rd of March now, and we are joining with the consistent hackers from the second day, from the remaining date. The remaining date is now the 2nd of March. So because this table we are inserting always the intersection between the current day and the ones um, before the current day, that they are always saved in the hackers, uh, in the uh, consistent hackers table, we are always getting the consistent right number out for every day and we can always put this in this consistent hackers table. So in the end, let's select star from consistent hackers to see if everything worked right. Okay, so actually we have to set update we have to set the remaining date as we did before also and we also have to say s dot submissions s dot submission date actually not submissions line 32 ambiguous column name and ch dot submission date okay so now we have the results and this is, looks like it worked so we put in the consistent hackers table we put all the hackers that they are still remaining in the first march in the second march in the third march and so on so now, of course, we don't want all the hackers in the output, but what do we actually want? We can look at the, at the task. We want the number that is submission, submitted each day, who made at least one submission each day. We have to count the unique, so distinct hackers, unique, who made at least one submission each day. Okay, so for that, we need another table variable I'm gonna, I'm gonna declare it here, declare count hackers table. So what's this gonna have? It's gonna have hacker ID, 
as an integer, same actually as the other table variable, and submission date as a date. So when do we use it? We go after the while loop. We are going to do insert into this new table variable, which is called count hackers. And what are we going to insert into it? We are going to select the count and now comes the count from distinct, which we actually want to do in this, this task from hacker ID. And the second should be the submission date. So we just write submission date from, from which? From this consistent hackers table, right? From consistent hackers table. So add consistent hackers. And also we have to group by, because we're having an aggregate function here, group by submission date. So now let's test it in, in, and we're doing select star from not consistent hackers. We already tested that, but count hackers, the new one. So let's see how this is working out. Okay, so he did something and we can see that every day it got le less. So 112 we had in the beginning, the distinct hackers who made a submission each day. And then of course, as the days progress, then people are falling out, they don't make a submission and they don't get counted again. And we're going down, 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 down until 35 here. In these days, they all did the submission 35 until the until the end from 7th of March to 15th of March. Okay, so it looks like it could be the right solution. Looks promising. So what do we do in the end here? We actually don't want to select this one, but we want to select from the first part, which we already figured out, which I saved here from my other video. And now the second column, this was the one that was not um, correct now. So we call it here uh, ch dot hacker ID we want to get the ch dot hacker ID and why ch because it's from the count hackers variable. So now we still have to join this count hackers variable and join count at count hackers ch on ch dot submission date because they have the same number of submission dates and they have one submission date that is exactly matching the submission state in submissions ch dot submission state equals s dot submission date and because do we have an aggregate here we don't need an aggregate anymore because we already have it as a hacker id so we can put the group by the side and let's run this code now Okay, it looks like it is about the right result, but we have way too many color uh, rows. So we still need the group by, even though we are not making the aggregate count here. We still need the group by clause. And we have to group by the submission date. We don't want uh, all these uh, rows, all these submission date rows that we get from the join that we made here. So we need to group by the submission date, group by the hacker ID, group by the name, and also group by ch.hacker ID. So let's see if it works. And there you go. We now solve the hardest problem on HackerRank SQL, 15 days of learning SQL. So this was quite a tricky problem. As you can see, the query got pretty long in the end. And especially at the part where we are joining, 
the consistent hackers table it is um, complicated to understand so please feel free to comment of course like and subscribe the video if you want to see more of that but also comment if you have any questions over it i would love to go into more details or maybe present it from a different light so you can understand more and get more value out of this video so thank you for, so much for watching and uh, see you in the next video